don't kill. Maybe you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy Shy. Shy versus everybody podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here. Boy Shot, Shot vs. A Bike Podcast, episode 169. Man, we got a legend in the building, man. Ain't no introduction really needed, but he a husband, he a father, he an actor, a rapper, and an OG, man. Detroit rap legend. We got Big Hurt in the building. What's good with you, bro? What up, bro? What's going on with you? <clears throat> same old man working staying busy and staying out the way at the same time for sure man hey, I mean I appreciate you coming on the show man for real for real cause a lot of times you know you ask people with a big name to come on a small platform even though it's a big platform but uh you know they give you a hard time man they really don't want to fuck with it cause they don't know you know what I'm saying what you about so I appreciate you coming on and showing love man yeah, much love now uh, we start everything off with a salute me while I'm here a lot of times we wait for people to pass away to give them their flowers you know what I'm saying write that long ass Facebook post about how we love him and her but it can't be the easy answer. It can't be your wife. It can't be your kids. It can't be, you know what I'm saying, those people around you in your close circle. It got to be somebody outside of that circle that wouldn't, you know what I'm saying, inspect the flowers. So you got somebody you want to go ahead and shoot some love to? Oh, shit. There's a lot of people I can say that to. I don't want to exclude nobody. I shit. Ain't gonna say anybody. <laughs> I mean, at my phone, get that <laughs> one. <clears throat> I mean, you know, uh, my family who I fuck with, man, I really don't, I mean, outside that, I got so many friends you got that I love, but I don't want to just say them like that. They don't give a fuck about me. <laughs> yeah, for sure, to my hood, man. To the flowers hood. to the hood, man. We right. drove for life. Man. Okay, for sure, man. Shout out to the hood, man. I ain't got no... I'm going to show love to... Uh, man, I ain't show love to this dude uh, already, but I'm going to show him love again because he in the basement, man. Shout out to uh, my dog, Verdi, man. He got a uh, movie, you know what I'm saying, just premiered last weekend. Sorry I couldn't make it, dog. You know what I'm saying? The send-off. And... uh. I wish he'd come back and rap, man, but maybe we'd, you know what I'm saying, get him to rap one day, man. But uh, salute to uh, my dog, Verdict, Sean Whitfield, you know what I'm saying? It was good, man. But uh, before I get to everything, man, there's a lot of times, we, as rappers, we don't talk about relationships and stuff, man. You being a, you know what I'm saying, a father, you being a husband, man. Talk about just, you know what I'm saying, how that is, you know, being a husband long term and, you know what I'm saying, what, what, what did you do to hold that down, man? Make sure, you know what I'm saying, nothing ever get in between that, that, that bond. Well, you know, it's a team effort on that. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It ain't really about me making shows. It's us making shows. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's just like anybody else. ups and downs. For sure. It's not perfect. So, you know, if it's worth staying together and making it work, we're going to make it work. For sure. You know what I mean? For as my family, i always been family-oriented. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we always been like that. Close, you know, close-knit. Mm -hmm. And, you know... We just we team work, make the dream work. For sure, no fast. Hell yeah, hell yeah. I'm a I'm a young dude who married in the game, man. So you know what I'm saying. A lot of times. No, congratulations. Oh yeah, for Ain't sure. Three. Wrong with yeah, three years, three years, man. Once you find that right one. That's the key. Yeah. The right one. For sure. You know, niggas married for different reasons. <laughs> you get married for the right one. You can no. always hit it, hit a chick, and talk to chicks. But when you marry one. That it really means something. For sure. What What was it early on? What was it that you like? That's the right one, like. I can't let that go at all. I can't lose that. Well, you know, early when I was kicking it, with, actually, when I first met my wife, we was arguing. <laughs> okay, <laughs> talk about that. Real talk, because uh, my man Clay, rest in peace, he passed okay. two years back. He used to go with her sister. Okay. This is back when we was young niggas, man. We riding the stolen caddies. We over in the stolen car. <laughs> he go over there and holler at her, her sister. She come out like, because it was me, him, a couple other niggas in some cars. Everybody riding around stolen cars. For so. sure. So she come out like, who's all these niggas over here? I'm like, who is your mama? <laughs> this is exactly what we said, bro. Yeah. She's like, who's all these niggas? I'm like, who is your mama? And we got to argue this dude, you know, man. We ended up talking and it's changed the number. and been together 35 years since. Man, congrats on that, dog. 35 so, years. That's crazy how I met, you know what I mean? So, yeah, man, that's, that's what's up, dog. That's what's up. For real, for real. Yeah, because I got me and my uh, producer were just talking about that before you came in with, uh, with a friend of mine. And I like, you know, saying that clock is running down for him, but he feel like it. So he's trying to rush love, and we like, dog, you can't rush it. Got to no, be. No, I got to be organic, bro. That ain't nothing. You really just put a clock on. Women do that a lot too. They get to wearing how old they get. <laughs> Men don't be as much. That's kind of more of a woman. They want to get <laughs> no, married, sure. put the dress on. And yeah. We, you no, know, we want to do it too. We meet the right one, but that's like almost something they've been taught from from since a kid. For sure. Know, women find a husband and get married, and kids, whatever, but. <clears throat> Got to be right first and foremost over everything. No, for sure. Wasting your time. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Shout out to Lil Hurt, man. I see he, uh, you know, saying he got young he Hurt. Got married, yeah, young Hurt. I'm sorry. Yeah, he just Hurt. got married. Uh, what last year? Uh, no, nah, this year. He got year? married in uh, April. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. We yeah. didn't even know. 
<laughs> real, real tall, bro. Yeah. Real low. And then he just put a video up. And he's like, damn. He came, bro, that's to us first. Like, I'm going to show y'all a video. They got an album out. So I'm thinking he done shot a video. <laughs> I'm like, let me see it. I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, he's silly. He's doing some silly comedy. Look looking like <laughs> Jerome on Snowfall. In the beginning, he got the Jerry Curl fro. <clears throat> but it was a play on. It was, it was meaning all the shit. So at the end, once it got toward the end, I'm like, wait a minute. Yeah. Little shit started popping into the. I'm like, wait a minute. Did y'all. That's when we all knew, man. My daughters and them were screaming and crying. The wife was crying. It was a hell of a moment, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we didn't expect. He never said nothing. They've been married since April, bro. We just saw that shit at the beginning of July. <laughs> Damn. You just found that, So right? they coming over, hiding their rings and all that when they came over. Not letting us know nothing. They had a low. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, shit was crazy, but it was a hell of a moment. It was a, uh, a beautiful moment, man. For sure. Heck yeah, heck yeah. But yeah, yeah, be on her head tired tonight, man. Yeah, you know she a good one too. So for sure, that's 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 hey, at the end of the day, that's what if you need a good one that's gonna have your back too. Cause yeah. a lot of times we get we get with these women, not knowing like they will for a certain reason. Then when hard times get to kicking in, oh yeah, that's the thing is take a test, man. You got to go through tests and trials to really know what you got. Mm -hmm. You know she went to Africa with him and everything. The great married man, so they went through a lot of different stuff. Seen stuff a lot of people ain't never only see for sure not together. For sure. You know what I mean? So. And she a good one from what I've seen. I love her to death. Sweet, sweet girl, man. So oh, yeah, for sure. She did the right thing. For sure, yeah. Shout out to love, man. Shout out to love. Love is in the air, y'all. <laughs> but, uh, man, it's halfway. We more than halfway through the year, man. How have your year been, 2023? How has it been for you? And did you have any goals coming into the new year that you wanted to go ahead and accomplish? Well, we wanted to work on this new project, so we basically done with that. Um, just doing some little tweaking here and there, a couple of things, and that's going to be out soon, so... Mm -hmm. Um, other than that, I just take it day by day, man. I, you know, the movie thing, of course, I'm getting back into that now. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> we just a shot Project 313, the remake. For sure. So we just did finish that one up with um, the staff from here and some of the staff from Cali. Mm -hmm. And uh, just staying busy, man. Documentary, like I just telling y'all, working on that. Mm -hmm. uh, videos, helping my son, supporting them. For sure. Taking care of, you know, shit at, at the crib. Yeah, yeah. You know, me and a wife, you know, still doing that. Got grandkids and shit. Yeah, granddad. A lot hurt. of shit going on now, Papa. You yeah, know, granddad. Oh, yeah, that's, that's, see, that's, that's the thing. Oh, you said, yeah, yeah, that's out the window. Huh? I'm in the rocking chair, yeah, I'll be granddad. <laughs> like, nah, I'm Papa. Yeah, he's still out here. Nah, nah. <laughs> For sure, yeah. Uh, that's <laughs> weird. No. You, they came right now. You say, hey, Papa. That's what they, that's what he is. For sure, hell yeah. But it's love, bro, I tell you. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, dog. You know what I'm saying? With with you and um, with you saying you get to the acting and stuff like that. Have you ever thought about you know a a, a, a series on your life? Cause you know we got BMF. You know what I'm saying. Have you ever thought about somebody shoot something on your come up in the Detroit rap game? Well, you know that that's kind of like what the documentary is. <clears throat> you know what I'm saying. So that's basically that. It just ain't a show like. You know, uh, uh, see episode one, episode two, it's going to be, you're going to see what's going on, how it started, and a lot of my accolades, a lot of shit I did, niggas might not even know, some may know. Mm -hmm. So that's what the documentary is for to me, more so than the movie, because then you get to really see me. It ain't nobody acting, trying to play me, or I, you know what I mean? It's a documentary, so mm -hmm. that's for it's as raw as it get, you know what I'm saying? So. I really never thought about doing no story like that as far as on my life, but yeah. I wrote some stuff myself that we working on in the future. Okay, okay. And I don't get too far into that. <clears throat> right now, I'm still in um, you know, preliminary stages or whatnot, but yeah, I got a lot of stuff I done wrote myself. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know that I do a lot of writing myself, just ain't put it out yet. Yeah. So um, that's coming and, you know, just staying busy. But, yeah, I definitely love film. I done did a few movies, though. This ain't my first rodeo or nothing. Yeah. We did the Project 313. We was kind of like some of the first people doing these Detroit movies. Some of them. I ain't saying no first first, but mm -hmm. <clears throat> he's writing the thick of that. We did our shit like in 06, mm -hmm. 05, you know what I'm saying? Okay. And then I did 5K1 with Clifton Powell, A.J. Johnson. For sure, no, yeah. Helped him out from there. Um, Forty the Great and me and a few other people. Mateen Cleese, he executive produced the He was in there for a minute, did a cameo. So I did a few movies. That was with Donnie Armstrong, two shot to Donnie. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and um some other couple of other ones too. And I did a, a couple of cameos and um uh what was that one with um Murder Pain the one the first ones they did, two eleven. Yeah, I, mean, yeah, I was in good. that we shooting that vessel on the projects or something, he had me doing that. <laughs> For so, sure. I mean, you know, I done did some stuff, but we just and I did still on my block. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, then I forgot my bad on that. I'm still on my block with Coco Brown. I don't know if y'all know Coco Brown. Yeah, is. yeah we and that with her and um, Gravy, Jamal Willard. That be yeah, a lot yeah, of the TV sure. movies. Yeah, he be down here a lot. Yeah. <clears throat> And, um, you know, so, yeah, I've been doing stuff, but I've been taking these long, like, hiatuses in between. Mm-hmm. And now we finished our just doing different stuff, and I want to show my range. Yeah, I was going to ask, like... the 313 movie, the first one, I was gangster street shit, and mm-hmm. 5K1, same way. And this one we just did, I'm a sergeant. Okay. So, you know, you'll see, you know what I mean? It's yeah. different. Now, as, a, as, a, as an actor, when, the, you know what I'm saying, you're getting these, uh, these roles and stuff, are you, like... Like make make sure you take the right role. Are you like you know what I'm saying? Do you want something different? Like you said, you want to go ahead and show your range. Are you looking for different roles? Like how you approach a role when somebody give you something? You know, what I'm saying to be in a movie. Yeah, I definitely like challenges and playing mm-hmm. different roles, but some stuff just off limits. You yeah, know, with me. No, for sure, fast. We ain't putting on no dresses. We ain't doing <laughs> that kind of shit. No, I can't do that. You know what I'm saying? So you know, it's people that will do that. Go ahead, and knock yourself out, but. I definitely want to do different stuff, but there's limits to certain stuff too that I'm that I would do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, for sure. Now you know, I usually on this show I have a lot of people that's on the come up. You know what I'm saying? So it's easy to ask this question. You a vet, but I want to know like, is it still something that you look at within yourself that you need to work on? That you know what I'm saying? That may be holding you back. Because it's easy to ask somebody on the come up like, you know, what I'm saying I'm fucking up in this area, that area. But you being a vet, I want to hear from you like, what's something that you still feel like you, that's challenging you that you need to go ahead and you know get over. In what aspect? Music? I it could be it, so life saying. either or. You know what I'm saying? It could, be, it could be life in general. It could be music. You know what I'm saying? What's something that you still feel like it may be holding you back or whatever that you need to work I on? I don't think nothing holding me back. It's just a matter of what I want to do. A mm-hmm. lot of times I'm just i cautious about how I move. I don't just jump on everything and anything. And, you know, I got another life outside of this stuff, man. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm a caregiver for my mother who got dementia. There's mm-hmm. a lot of shit going on. Lincoln's don't be knowing that behind the scenes. Yeah. They think we just hang and party and pop bottles and all that. No, nah, I'm at home making sure my mama good. You know, had strokes and all kind of shit. Yeah. So when I ain't doing that, most time with my family, my wife, kids, chilling or I'm recording or working on something. And taking care of my old girl, man, who's been living with me for like 15 years. Who's been her caregiver. Mm-hmm. So... I ain't nothing hold me back. I just yeah. got a lot of hats I got to wear. Sometimes you don't have time to do some of the stuff you want to do. You got to put it on the back burner. Mm-hmm. As far as music, that's like riding a bike, bro. I've been doing this 30 years. I ain't nothing, ain't nothing to learn on that. No for more. sure. Now, how's that some cha- stuff I just won't even do that niggas be out there doing. <laughs> you know, for sure. Yeah, I can bet. I'm an older cat, and I, some of that ain't appealing to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, you know what I'm saying? I got family that's, that's going through what your mom going through. How is that How is that challenge for you? Like, you know, you know seeing your mom, you know, change uh, you know, change in front of you and stuff like that. Like, how how was that for you dealing with that? No, you gotta deal with it. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's my mama, so I'm I'm there to the end. Oh no, you know for sure. Saying? But yeah, it get tough, bro. When you see somebody from how they was to how they be in, how they becoming, mm-hmm. it ain't easy. You know, yeah, especially yeah, yeah. your mama. Niggas love their mama. You love your daddy too. But your mama, that's mama. You know no, what for saying? sure. <clears throat> so you know, it's get tough sometimes, man. It's been rough, been a long ride. Mm-hmm. But you know, I take one day at a time. I don't get too much. On my plate with it, I just, one day, if it's a good day, good. We had a good day today. Mm-hmm. And I keep going from there. Me and my wife, I give her a big salute, too. That's why I say it's about who you marry, too. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of chicks with a bail, the shit we had to deal with, bro. My mother, bro. That's her mother-in-law. This ain't mm-hmm. her biological mother. Yeah. I got a sister. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is my wife, mother-in-law. So it ain't like she obligated to have to do a lot of shit that we had to do mm-hmm. when it comes to changing her and this and that and babying and this and that. Just getting shit up that she done fucked up. And, yeah. And she's been doing this with me for 15 years. Yeah. So, you know, that outside of that, you know, I still do what I've been doing. Shows, music, mm-hmm. fuck up my sons, you know, grandkids. Just trying to enjoy life, too, at the same time. Sometimes you get too busy with doing all this stuff. And you don't even enjoy life, and it ain't promise, bro. Whether mm-hmm. you're rich, whether you're not rich, enjoy life, too. Take some time out for yourself, man. No, fast, fast. You know what I mean? Enjoy life, because the way we live in our days, man, it ain't guaranteed, bro. No, not at all, so, not at all, man. You definitely got to enjoy life. You definitely got to, you know what I'm saying, live for every day. But, man, you know, I wanted to talk to you about something, man. When I, when I My introduction to rap, I had five people that was important to my introduction to rap, man. And you, you want to, um, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. First person was MC Hammer. You know what I'm saying? As a, as a six-year-old, five-year-old, MC Hammer was like everything for me. You feel me? I'm like, dog, who is this dude? This nigga is hard. You know what I'm saying? Second, it was Tupac. The reason why it was Tupac because that's the only rapper that my dad was listening to. Everything else was like Temptations, you know, mm-hmm. Bob Marley, shit like that. So Tupac, I kind of like gravitated towards Tupac just because of my parents. Then it was go ahead, it was Juvenile, 400 Degrees album. I was uh, eighth or ninth grade. 
I'm like, dog, what the fuck is this? Like, you know what I'm saying? It was something new, so it mm-hmm. made me it made me want to go ahead and listen and go back and everything on everything I miss. At that it was Project Pat. I'm like, dog. Project Pat, huh? Yeah, so I'm like, what that, the that's a different it, it, was, choice. it was Getty Green. <clears throat> we was on our way, we was going to Gross Point North my first two years. My brother played this shit. I'm like, dog, this shit, like, I've been missing out on music. And then I moved back to Detroit because they kicked me out of Gross Point. Big hurt. My my boy had played your uh your your what's name? Guilty as charged. I'm like, oh, who the fuck is this? Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's like, dog, you it was the first time I heard a Detroit artist, you know what I'm saying? And I'm like, damn, I gotta do my homework because I don't know shit right now. You mm-hmm. feel me? So those are the five people that kind of like brought me into wanting to love hip hop and listen to hip hop. Much respect, bro. For sure. So who was the one for you that like made you want to just go ahead and just, you know what I'm saying, stick with this rap? And just made you like just fall in love with rap, you know, saying for your reasons. Well, what made me want to do it is, I'll say, cats like Run DMC, mm-hmm. LAO, Rock Kim, mm-hmm. Big Daddy Kane. Yeah. And then um, from there, I guess you could say like, I mean, Pac didn't make me want to rap. I was rapping already then. Mm-hmm. But Pac was somebody I definitely liked a lot. He went in my tops. Greatest made you one of the greatest of all time, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And um, Cube. I got a lot of different people for different reasons, you know what I mean? Yeah. And W.A. for us groups. But those the ones made me want to rap. They was out before I was even rapping. Uh, like I say LL Cool J, Run DMC, mm-hmm. Rakim, and probably Big Daddy Kane. For sure, for sure. Me personally. Yeah. Now, I want, you know, I mentioned MC Hammer, and you being already, you know, saying, you know, older or whatever than I was during that time. How yeah. was y'all looking at a guy like MC Hammer coming to the game? Because, you know, we look at, like, nowadays we look at certain rappers like, oh, this, this is clown shit, you know what I'm saying? For me, that was everything. How would you looking at a guy like Hammer? I mean, when I first saw him, I just like, a dancing motherfucker. This motherfucker. <laughs> sure. That's what I was thinking, like, this nigga going crazy. <laughs> Dance like a motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it was different. I was knocking it. You know, mm-hmm. a lot of people knocked it and tried it because he dancing, but... Back when I was coming up as a teen, niggas did dance. Yeah, for sure, That's yeah. where you think the jit and all that shit came from. It wasn't just women doing it. Mm-hmm. Niggas did used to dance. They had their pistol on still with this dance. <laughs> for still sure. It was gangster and all that, so don't get it twisted. But, you know, as it as time went on a little bit, I think Hammer kind of, while was welcome with certain people, as far as all he was doing was that for the most part. Mm-hmm. But I met Hammer in person, too, at my film festival, man, for Friday 313. It's like I say, like 06, and it's on my documentary. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Him, Mike Tyson, all of them's out there. He a cool brother, man. Mm-hmm. Solid brother. He came and watched our movie, sat in there and watched the whole thing. On the video, he asked me what time do it start. I told him he came back and actually sat in there and watched it. I met Luke Gossett, mm-hmm. um, James Avery, who played Uncle Phil. The Fresh sure. Prince was there. This is a real premiere. Yeah. So, um, yeah, man, Hammer's a solid nigga. And they say he got them hands. They say Hammer will whoop your oh, ass. Oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, he had to be playing so don't with. don't get it twisted because yeah. he's dancing. See, he got, he got that wind, though. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Got dance, he got to dance. Get out on your ass. Hell yeah. So, yeah, Hammer is a solid brother, man. I actually met him for a brief, man. And, uh, <laughs> you know, he was cool. So, for much sure. respect to him. Now, sticking on, you know what I'm saying, music and stuff, man. If I had that outside of your music, if I wanted to know Big Hurt, you know what I'm saying, your introduction to the world, but you couldn't say anything, you had to play a song or an album. What would be a song or album that would explain who you are? Mm, explain who I am. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of times we listen to music and we like, damn, this is this is me. Like, this is my life. They telling like it's a song called "Hard as Stone." Mm-hmm. On, um, my overdose album. Mm-hmm. A lot of people slept on that album because it took me so long to get out. I was like detox. I kept saying it's coming, coming, coming. <laughs> another year went past, another year went past, another. So when we finally got out, I just was like almost a burden. And even though it was dope, I just go ahead and put it out. Yeah. But if you ever listen to it, it's a song called Heart of Stone. Mm-hmm. It's like a touching dark kind of song. Mm-hmm. But that motherfucker go hard, man. Yeah. That's from the soul. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's one sure. of them. Confessions, a lot of people heard that one, but this one, Heart of Stone, more so updated as far as the newer revised what I'm feeling like you know what I mean so mm. if you ever listen to that you'll see man it's funny that you brought confessions man cause I was you know of course I knew you was coming on the show so I you know went back and did some more homework and started listening to some of your music with confessions is it all for me to say that I compare that song to get a boy's mind playing tricks on me because you say some stuff mm-hmm. like that's kind of like similar to, you know what I'm saying to, to that song mm. I don't think so, personally. Mm-hmm. I think man playing tricks on me is more of a psychological thing. They talk about how they, 
mental illness in sight, how you can be, because my mama's schizophrenic. Mm. That's why I'm paranoid sitting there looking out the windows. and mm. My shit more of like, nigga, the family secrets. Yeah. That you ain't supposed to be telling motherfuckers that you're supposed to go to, go, go to your grave with this shit. That's mm. what confessions is. Mm -hmm. That's why it's called confessions. Mm. I think they both are touching song. They, they touch you mentally and, and, and psychologically a little bit because of what's being said. But it's two perspectives. Theirs is more so on the suicidal, struggling man. My man fucking with me, got me thinking one thing and something else. Mm -hmm. It's more of a mental thing to me. Yeah. I think they was more so on that tip with that. Now, we go through a lot of mental struggles out here, but confessions is like, what? Yeah, yeah, no, for like, sure. That's what happened. So, was it know, hard to write that song? Nah, it's all real. Yeah. Shit, it just, it was some. I had wrote confessions really like six years before I put it out on Get to Your Charge. Mm -hmm. That's people don't know. That was my man, old favorite song. He passed from cancer. Mm hmm. And I was so mad that he passed and felt bad that he never, I never put it out to the, so he could hear it in the song for him. So I went ahead and put it out immediately. When he passed, I'm like, we got to put this out, bro. Yeah, yeah. We got Ben Sane one here. My man, a pad. We didn't get the lady here. Yeah, man. So AK produced that too, man, Tone Scott. Um, so yeah, we went ahead and put it out on that album on that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, no, that's one of my favorite songs for sure, for sure. Love. Hell yeah, that's one of my shits, though. I went back. Like, I ain't gonna lie, man. When it came out, I ain't go straight to, I was too young to go straight to the CD store and buy it, man. So I got it for my bootleg dude. <laughs> like, I'm sorry, though. Well, you I didn't get you, so you stuck. <laughs> There's a lot of people getting caught doing that. Boy, I was confiscating all that shit. Sure, sure up. You was a kid. I probably just gave you the real one. Like, give me that. <laughs> Here, man, take this. Yeah, shout out to my bullhead dude, man. He used to ride around in this broke down car, bro, and had everything that you everything that you need. Like I said, I'm 15, 14. I need it. I don't know, you know, I can't yeah. afford a CD from Chantanese. You know what I'm saying? I'm on the east side, so I can't afford to go grab it. I mean, make it that big hurt, though. You got it? Bet. I'm good. Let me get that KDZ stuck in my ways. All right, bet. <laughs> yeah. Now, you being the OG in the game, man, I'm having my dog Verdi down here. He always told me a lot, you know, he told me a lot of times that you gave him great advice. You know what I'm saying? That he's, mm -hmm. you know, carry on to this day. How important is it to be an OG and a mentor to these young rap dudes coming up, man? It's real important if you want to keep everything going like it's going to be on the map now. Mm -hmm. And even before it was, I was like that, bro. It's just the area I'm from. We was from the area where even though we was doing all little dirt and shit, most of the cats would try to tell you to do something else if you could do it. They saw you could hoop or you could play football or something. They try to keep you away from the street. Like, they go ahead and do that. I'm like, what you need? You need some shoes? Let me buy you some equipment. This and, and kept the kids out of the, out of the street shit. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if I see potential in somebody or something, I'm going to try to help them or give them at least a word of advice or something. And Verdict always showed me a lot of potential, man. Jock was always talking about him. I said, let me go see what this young nigga doing. You know, I checked <laughs> him out and his, his energy. Yeah. He had a good vibe. I could feel his spirit. Mm -hmm. And there was a good spirit in him. That's part of it too, man. A lot of motherfuckers got a lot of shit in them. You can peep like some bullshit in them. Like, so I hear on some. Yeah, for sure. I didn't feel like that about him, man. That's why I ate to my son. I always tried to tell him because I knew he could have potential. Mm -hmm. And look what he doing now. You know what I'm saying? He's a film and all. He's still one of the coldest young cat spitting it is for out sure. here. No, fast. You know, he dope. And that's what it is, man. You need to push some time because doors get slammed in your face. Some mm -hmm. people ain't got tough skin. Mm -hmm. They might think they really ain't got it, but sometimes it just you got to work on shit. Mm -hmm. That's just like us. We first put our little first shit out, man. We thought our shit was the shit, man. <laughs> yeah, we went to the studio, somebody shit was real mixed and mashed. Yeah. Like, oh, man. Yeah, he's like, oh, my shit ain't hot, though. <laughs> but we had what we had. For sure. We for young sure. nigga. We didn't have all that equipment to do our shit. My yeah. man had a little drum machine or something. We trying to figure it out, you know what I'm saying? Eight <laughs> hey, or weights. Yeah. We ain't have all that shit, so we just knew then, okay, we got to work. You got to go ahead to the lab and work, man. For so, sure. so all you got to know, I take constructive criticism, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he good at that. Yeah. A lot of cats, man, they don't think you about telling them. They think everything they put out fire. I done had cats, man, it's fire, huh? And yeah. <laughs> send it to me. I don't disrespect nobody's names and nothing. No, for sure. Some of it was, but a lot of it, like, bro, that ain't, it ain't even I'm about to say, how, do you give them the truth, like, or do you just kind of, like, no, pass I don't, it? I don't play. I don't. No, it's great. I'll mm -hmm. be like, no, you know, keep working. Mm -hmm. I don't get to being too harsh. Yeah. Because, like I said, some niggas don't have tough skin. Mm -hmm. You can break my spirit just by... That ain't shit. Mm -hmm. I tell man, keep working. Yeah, for and sure. To me, keep working just mean keep working. No, for sure. That don't mean it ain't shit. That don't mean it's dope. That mean, you know, you keep working. Yeah, you better. That's here. a good way of saying you got work to do without disrespecting somebody. I wonder what, what you would have said about my album. Because, <laughs> <laughs> man, like, when I first started, shout out to my dog, Red. It was man. bad, huh? Oh, man. I might have told you, quit work. <laughs> 
Yo, so we was the um, we was the, uh, Young City Boys, man. That was our name young back in City Boys. Young City Boys, man. Back in um, oh, oh five, oh six. The end of 05, I, my um, my girl at the time was like, yeah, we having a, you know, we having a baby. I felt that rap was my easiest way to make a million. Right, you just saw the money. You yeah. Know, he ain't realize he had to go through all this. <laughs> I'm going to put a mic in front of my face. We're going to be rich tomorrow. No, oh. for sure. So we had this song. Um, this is before the song. We had we had a couple of songs we had, you know, did whatever. My boy made beats on the Fruity Boots. And um, we were passing out St. Andrews, bro. And I used to write my number and my email address on the CDs. And um, somebody had called me. And left a voicemail like nine in the morning, and was like, "Nigga, this shit ass. Stop rapping, nigga. This shit trash." Yeah. And nigga, it hurt my spirit though to wake up from a good a good night's sleep with your lady to hear somebody just going crazy on your shit. Dog. So your shit cheap. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that ain't a good thing to wake up. To. <laughs> yeah, dog, it was bad, bro. It was bad. But but I kept going. I kept, I got yeah. a little better, though. I got a little better, yeah. though. You know what I'm saying? But I, I, I can never get on. You know, saying y'all guys level, man. You in the verdicts and stuff like that, man. So see, thing about it. <laughs> One key thing you said when you first talking about you used to rapping, you said I'm gonna get a quick million. Yeah. When we was rapping, nigga wasn't getting no money, bro. Yeah. We was rapping because we love the art of lyricism and love the art of putting shit together and and seeing the outcome. We love the game. Mm -hmm. And that's the difference now because everything is so glittery and money. Everybody putting holding money in every video. Getting the best car. Everybody got neck full of jewelry. Mm -hmm. It was people that had a little jewelry and shit like the Slick Ricks, Rock Kim and them, and yeah. you know, Big Daddy K a little bit back then. But that's not what they whole thing was. That no. just they got it, so that's what they did. They was always dope on that mic, man, mm -hmm. and dope with that music. You know what I'm saying? So that's what what we was trying to do. Just be dope with this shit. We if money comes, we know eventually if you get big enough. Of course, at some point it might come. Mm -hmm. But let's do this first. Yeah. Let's make sure we get the craft part of it good. For sure. And that's the difference. Everybody nine. That's why so many niggas rapping. Not saying you can't. It's free world. Anybody can rap if they want to. But mm -hmm. it's a lot of cats rapping now. I wouldn't dare try to rap 25 <laughs> years ago. No, for sure. For They'd sure. have been like, nah, oh, that ain't really probably me. Yeah. They seeing what niggas really putting out at that time was a whole different kind of vibe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, if you got a nice hook, the beat straight, you can talk a little shit. You ain't got to be the best rapper. <clears throat> you know, you might make a hit. Mm -hmm. so. do, do, are, are, are you pissed off about stuff like that? Like somebody, I mean, I know you're not. I'm just asking a question. Like when you see people getting on so easy and not really putting the work in, like you said, you love this shit. It wasn't about the money. It was about the love of the craft and who you grew up loving. Like do you, when you see people blowing up and, and getting out there and not really loving it, do it kind of make you mad a little bit? Oh, it don't make me mad. Mm -hmm. I mean, but I just understand it's a different game now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I don't get mad. I'd be glad for these young guys, bro, because we've been getting robbed for years with this music. Mm -hmm. So you juice that every goddamn dime you can get. Yeah. That don't mean I got to love necessarily what you're doing lyrically or how your songs is, mm -hmm. but I don't knock young niggas or these cats. Some of them I do like. Yeah. So I don't knock nobody. Get that money because that's what it's here for, for you to get. Mm -hmm. Instead of getting robbed. Like a lot of that's why you heard Jay-Z, I'm paying you back what you did to the cold crushing. Mm -hmm. They was robbing us so many years and still robbing a lot of niggas you know what I'm saying For so sure. if you're getting that money and all I'm glad that my little cousins and little nieces or nephews or grandkids might want to rap one day mm -hmm. the more this dough keep being open and more people keep getting chances they got a chance to eat all of it too so no I'll never be mad at that For sure. I just wish that a lot of cats would respect the craft a little more because mm -hmm. it's about a craft too at the same time mm -hmm. to me if you rapping your shit just really straight up trash but you know you talking a lot of shit and pull out money and nothing else mm -hmm. And what is it really? Is it really rapping or is it just you just talking shit music? <laughs> yeah, no, for sure. So that's yeah. like a singer that can't hit the notes. You're supposed to be able to sing. You're a singer, right? Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But there's a lot of songs that's hits and a lot of people that's on it don't can't really sing. You yeah. hear them live, you be like, damn. You yeah, know what for I'm sure. Yeah, yeah. So it's just different now, man, the way they market and the way they push it out. It ain't so much talent based as it is the numbers and who looking at you and you know, if, if your numbers is big and all that type of shit. So. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, young rappers coming up, bro, I say this about, like, you know, rappers in the industry. Like, if I'm a rapper in the industry and I'm I'm getting up there, I want to go to somebody like an E-40, or a, a Master P. You know what I'm saying? Somebody that's been, you know what I'm saying, in this game for a long time. With you, you've been in the game since, like I said, for the, for the longest. Do people come to you for advice or whatever, dog? Or if not, should more people start coming to the OG rappers who've been doing it for a minute just to get their advice on how to, you know what I'm saying, stick around for, for the long run? And not just for the well, time being. You know, being. they're going to tell them the right advice. Yeah, I think it's people that care. Like I said, I care about, you know, young cats. I don't just be 
just saying any damn thing to them that they want to hear and all that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, that's what your parents and stuff like that for, too. Your father and whoever in your life was kind of... It ain't just about music, it's about life, too, man. Yeah, for sure. And sometimes when you live life the right way, everything else falls into place. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You could be the dopest rapper it is and all that, but then you out there doing dumb shit in the street. You ain't going to live to see that shit, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? So learn how to play the game of life out there, too, at the same time with what you're trying to do, whether you're rapping, singing... Acting or if you're just working a job. Yeah. But yeah, advice is always something that should be given to young cats because it was given us. We're supposed to pass it down. Mm-hmm. That's why sometimes I be trying to figure out why a lot of young cats don't care about what was before them. Oh, yeah, no. A lot of them uh, attitudes like, oh, fuck them old niggas or fuck them, it's about us. But now you got to know where you was to know where you can, can no, be and where sure. you're headed. No, fast. Because I was uh, in a podcast one day telling some young cats about a few cats they didn't know about. Mm-hmm. They knew about me, Street Lords, Blade, that era, you know what I'm saying? Cheddar Boys, but they didn't know, like, Awesome Dre, mm-hmm. Eshawn. Eshawn, yeah. Boss and Smiley and DMW and French Vince and, mm-hmm. I, and I had to put a wall. Mm-hmm. So I put some old videos and showed them. And they were like, "Damn, yeah. I never heard." Of them. <laughs> I'm like, "Yeah, man, this is before me. Yeah. Like, it was days before we were. Mm-hmm. Even though I was running around with a lot of those, I used to fuck Chaos and Maestro and all, and we used to battle all the time. Mm-hmm. Me and um, Chaos, who is part of Detroit 300 now. Okay, me and he used to battle all the time, and that was Chaos and Maestro and Maestro. It's Jason Wilson. He do all the books and all that. Now he got the school, the karate school for the kids. He big, man. He got Tyrese and all them kind of people on his page chiming in with him and all that. Mm-hmm. He used to be maestro. That's Cal's maestro. But make a long story short, they didn't know about these people. Yeah. So I put them up on color videos. Like if you go to uh, Austin Dre, Franklin Speaking video, mm-hmm. Frankly Speaking, mm-hmm. you'll see the little boy that played Trey. And men and uh, boys in the hood. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This before Boy in the Hood came out. Yeah, damn. He had him in the video. He had a, a scene where he in the classroom and he talking to the kids. Look, class, what y'all want? And he in there. Hey, awesome, Dre. Raise his hand. The little boy. That's when it's when he was little. Right when he moved with his daddy. Mm-hmm. And boys in the hood, not the older Trey. When he yeah, was yeah, for sure. Yeah, when he was Cuba. Yeah, 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 yeah. He in the video and all that. This before Boy in the Hood. Mm-hmm. Awesome, Dre was signed with Priority, which had W.A. Mm-hmm. Ice Cube, that's when you see the W.A. Straight Out Cotton kind of movie, Ice Cube busting all that shit up. That's yeah. priority. Okay, okay. But, um, so, you know, I just try to give him advice to cut him, make a long story short. Mm-hmm. We can keep on going all day. No, for but, sure. Yeah, I told him that and showed him that, and they was kind of like, damn, I'm yeah. OG. I yeah. appreciate it. I ain't never heard of them. A yeah. Wall showed him a video. You don't want none of this. And just putting them up on shit like these niggas out way before we was, bro. No, so. for sure. And, you, and that's important, bro. That's like, like not with just rap, with just whatever you do in your craft. If you really love this shit, you got to go back and do the history, do the studying. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and I, podcasting, I think, hooping, football, like whatever yeah. it is, you need to go back and really see where it came from. Right. And not just what's in your face right now. You feel me? Now, you said something that's a, that was important to me that stood out. Me and my other producer was talking about this. You you mentioned living life, just living life and going through shit. Mm-hmm. How important is it like to to live life to be able to make a song, do a podcast, have a conversation? Because a lot of times we jump in this shit and we just ain't we had no life that we live. You know what I'm saying? Because we was talking about you know different podcast shows. And if you haven't escaped your neighborhood, how can you really have a conversation? Or how can you really write a song? So how much life do you got to live to really be a, a, a incredible MC? You feel me? And not just seeing what you see every day, like it's gonna be kind of hard to really express yourself and really talk about something if you ain't never been nowhere, or live life. Well, I mean, it depends what you want to what you want to show people. You learn. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm from the hood, mm-hmm. so you know, of course, I'm gonna talk about hood shit. For Some sure. people wasn't born like that. Mm-hmm. That don't mean they can't be a great rapper. Mm-hmm. So I can't necessarily say that. They just they outlook gonna be different. Mm-hmm. They might rap about their credit score or something and all that type of shit. <laughs> they living good like that. I'm. I'm be rapping by how the lights got cut off and this and that, and my man got shot. Mm -hmm. So it depends how you grew up. I can't really say you got to live everything that we live in the hood to know to be dope on on some rapping. You can stay a lot of shit. It's a lot of different kind of raps out here. Mm -hmm. But we from the block, so we give you all perspectives. And we still taught that shit. So we know the the good side and we know the bad. We know both. Some people only know the good. Mm -hmm. So we more well-informed. Because we didn't have both sides of the track. Mm-hmm. But, you know, somebody that didn't grow up rough or had it was well to do, their parents was doing good and all that, they're going to talk about their perspective of what it could be. It still could be something dope, but it just dope, might yeah. not be something we want to hear or that person want to hear. Like, a lot of niggas don't like him. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I hear a lot of niggas, I don't play that, I don't play 
He don't have club music. Mm -hmm. Don't get me. Don't get it twisted. He don't. He don't have no head knocking club shit. Mm -hmm. But from a lyricist perspective, and from just a raw rapping and MCing and hip hop, one of the coldest niggas ever touch a mic. I don't know what niggas be listening to. <laughs> yeah, I listen to it for that. I don't yeah. listen to it when I'm at the club. My man, we finna go hang. No. Mm -hmm. But from when I want to hear some niggas spitting some shit, he one of the niggas I was respecting on that. For sure. And did business with them and as much love. So. I get it. A lot of young niggas, they ain't into that. So mm -hmm. that's cool. Everybody can like what they like. I ain't knocking that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's just different perspectives. Like what you were saying, you can come from different backgrounds. Eminem and whatnot, they're in the street getting money and hustling and all that type of shit. He's in the trailer park in the other little house mm -hmm. where they live or something over there. So he didn't grow up around us. He came around and he started fucking with proof. Yeah. But that was for hip hop. That was just to rap. Sure. So he ain't been in the street like we was and like that. So, of course, he ain't rap about that. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't rap about, I hate my mama either. I love <laughs> my motherfucking mama. I just told you. Yeah. I take care of mine. For sure. But, like I say, that come from different ways of living. That's what his his life was or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Most black people, we love our mama. That's why Pop came out with their mama. For sure. Yeah. And, you know, no matter what she was. And he was like, she's a crap fan. No, I still my mama. So, yeah. It's just a different way of, of looking at shit, yeah, you know, yeah. when you raise different. Yeah, dear mama, you know? boy, that's, a, that's definitely a classic, bro. I remember one Christmas, I was, too no broke with, I was too broke to buy my mom something for Christmas. She came home from work, I left a little note by the tape player, and I'm like, press play. She pressed play, came down crying, niggas like, God damn, now I'm crying and shit, though, you know what I'm saying? So, I was 18, bro, 19, I'm broke as hell. I'm like, damn, it's Christmas Eve. I'm like, I don't know, what the fuck, I'm going to get my mom. She working, busting her ass, still taking care of me, even though I'm 19. You know what I'm saying? So when she came home from that bus, had that song right there, press play, made her a little something, and shit, that was a good ass, you know what I'm saying, Christmas gift, you feel, you feel me? Mm -hmm. So that song mean a lot to me too, though. But uh, you you mentioned like young dudes coming up in Detroit, you mentioned yourself and like, you know what I'm saying, the past rappers from the city, and I know you went through your little, you know, beefs and shit, we ain't got to talk about it, but nowadays, you see a lot of shit that got squashed between young rappers and shit in the city. How important was that for the city to go ahead and grow and prosper, like, to end those little beats that we did have within the, you know saying, amongst ourselves? I mean, I think everybody should try to make it work and get past that kind of shit if they can. Mm -hmm. Some shit just is so deep-rooted that some niggas just can't be passed. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's real shit. Yeah. But the shit that can be overlooked, like, look, bro, let's sit down, and everybody getting some money on top of it, and the door is open... And a lot of young niggas eating now uh, off this music shit in the city. If you can squash it <clears throat> and it ain't that serious, yeah, mm -hmm. so I don't talk about like, man, man, let's keep getting money plus his power in numbers. Mm -hmm. All his people gonna fuck with you, all your people gonna fuck with him. Both y'all out there doing it big or whoever or she or whoever it may be. So, yeah, if you can, try to get past, you know what I'm saying, because there's power in numbers in Detroit on the map right now. So. For sure. No, and I think once, you know what I'm saying, some of those beefs did get squashed, we just started seeing people, you know what I'm saying, gravitating towards us. I don't know if it came from Days Loaf. I don't know if it came from T Grizzly when he came out with the first day out. But we started getting a lot, a lot of love and a lot of, you know what I'm saying, eyes on the city. With the acting, with the music, you know what I'm saying? We started getting a lot of love that we didn't get back, in, you know what I'm saying, during your time. And, like, what to you, what was the reason why we wasn't getting so much love? I know I heard you speak on, like, the whole Tupac and Biggie shit, and they really want to really fuck with, you know what I'm saying, that lifestyle of music. But what, besides that, what was some shit, you know what I'm saying, why we wasn't getting seen like we are now? Because we didn't have social media. Mm. That's just bottom line, period. Ain't nothing else to talk about. Mm -hmm. We didn't have YouTube, Facebook, MySpace, <laughs> IG, none of that, bro. Mm hmm so when we was doing this shit and we was at the top of our shit and we ain't had none of that. Mm -hmm. That's big. Yeah. Just sit there and land everybody and push a button and get shit, niggas. <laughs> yeah. Videos is like 30,000, 40,000 to shoot a video. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For real. We shot one video. <laughs> like, I ain't shooting nothing no more video. <laughs> I'm not a customer. Yeah. You shot a video for uh, Roll With Us. Mm -hmm. And that was it, man. It was cold, though. Same nigga shot his shit. You should shoot E40 and them. Yeah. Shot they shit. Yeah. But, um,. So you think yeah, social media was the and thing that was it? Was it. It's definitely. It's, that's not even no. That's uh, that's kind of like obvious because mm -hmm. we ain't had no way to get seen like that. Mm -hmm. Unless you on video, BET uncut, <laughs> yeah, or sure. some shit like that. Yeah. You got YouTube now. You can just post your shit and let the world see. It. We got none of that, and yeah. we still had labels calling. You know what I'm saying? Without none of that, just from the word of mouth on the street. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, man, it was it was that's definitely it. Yeah, we did. had a bit in the world if we had social media and YouTube. <laughs> yeah. They would put out videos for a couple few hundred dollars and shit like that. We did a hundred videos. Mm -hmm. No and all those songs that was classic, we had videos on that shit, bro. That shit wasn't nothing like that shit cost a lot of money back then. Yeah, because the only thing here was a box and that was in the city. 
Yeah, and you know, know yeah, the boss, that was even before us, though. I'm mm -hmm. saying the boss, that was like I was saying, AWOL, Austin awesome Dre here. But that wasn't enough. That wasn't like now. Social mm -hmm. media has done took over Twitter and this and that, so many different outlets. Mm -hmm. We had not one of them. So we had all those in outlets. What do you think of uh, happened, bro? Mm -hmm. We had niggas calling us, fucking with us from all kinds of places, man, without none of that shit. Mm -hmm. Just word of mouth. Like, who's these niggas that such and such? Who's these? And the street lords, too. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, it was if we had social media back then and all that, it been a whole nother level. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, for sure. Now, now I want to ask you, man, growing up, man, real quick, you know, we didn't talk about music and stuff, man, but... And you, you spoke to your mom, but who who was in the household with y'all, man? How how was it growing up as a as a as a young hurt back in the day, man? I grew up in my grandmother's house. Okay. My mama was paranoid schizophrenic mm -hmm. most of her life, but okay. the thing that's so crazy is my mama a seamstress, right? Mm -hmm. She used to work for Mark Buchanan. Mm -hmm. This back when the leather Gandalf was out, wasn't no Pelly yet. Okay, it was just Mark Buchanan. She just sold leather coats and didn't make all our Easter shit. She just get the little fabric from Joanne Fabrics. <laughs> and then she had to sew them straight up, bro. Mm -hmm. She was she, she used to do a lot of people's prime dresses in the hood, we kids. You know, she was doing good. Her and my father broke up. Mm -hmm. And he just left us, basically. And she kind of basically had like a mental breakdown from that shit, man. And mm -hmm. All her life she was struggling with paranoid schizophrenia. Yeah. That's why I know when the ghetto boys talking that shit, I understand what some of that shit really is firsthand, bro. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, so, you know, my grandma raised me, grandfather. And, um, uh, shit, I slept on the couch when I lived there because everybody there was already people there. My other uncles and aunts and some, some of them lived there. Mm. One of my aunts ain't but 10 years older than me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we close like brothers and sisters, like my uncles and aunts and all that. Mm. But yeah, I grew up in the house with them, man. And, um, I never felt neglected or deprived or nothing. It just, it is what it is. Mm. See, back then we wasn't spoiled and all that like some of these kids is now, nah, bro. Yeah. We appreciated shit. For sure. Because <clears throat> we didn't have nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Um, my grandfather he died kind of young, like fifty nine. He passed okay. right after he retired from GM. Mm -hmm. He worked for GM on in Hamtramck, and he passed. And you know, my grandma was staying, taking care, of, take care of everybody. And my mom was going through her shit with with her mental illness. He kind of running my family actually, but my mom was going through the most. Mm -hmm. So it was kind of rough, man, for a, for a while. But we had good moments too. Everything wasn't just terrible. You know, I had food to eat. Yeah, for I sure. had a roof over my head. Yeah. At that time, that's all was good enough for me. I can go outside <laughs> and play, play football, play sports. Yeah. Which I did, cause a lot of kids play sports all the time. We was coming up. Yeah. They, they still do, but a lot of them in them phones now more so sure. than no, they is that. Sure. We didn't have yeah, a phone. Yeah. If you had a phone when I was a kid, you was a dope. Dude. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, yeah. We yeah. had landlines. Yeah, I know. So, you know <laughs> Heck yeah, that's it. Hoping nobody on the phone so you can get yeah. through it. Shit. And you better get off, cause the line be busy. <laughs> yeah, you get your ass off. Talking the two way, three way later to later on. Yeah, for My sure. grandma ain't like that shit, cause she thought it was rude. Mm -hmm. When you talk to somebody, yeah. somebody might be calling in and all that shit. She ain't even want no two way. And, uh, yeah, a real, you know, Southern Baptist people that believe in doing everything with respect. Mm -hmm. So she didn't want no two way. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, I got my ass cut out a lot for that shit, yeah, dog. Man, so uh, <laughs> that's how I grew up, bro. You know what I'm saying? Wasn't no sports shit or none of that type of shit. I actually got a song called "Hold On" mm -hmm. on my new project that said talking about a lot of that shit. Yeah, it's me and both my sons on this. Mm -hmm. This this is a cold motherfucker, but um. Yeah, that was it, man. I, and I played sports, and that's what kind of got me through life. Then, like I say, I started listening to music more, mm -hmm. rapping, running them, seeing all that. LL them came out early '80s. That was it. Yeah, talk about that. Like, what high school you went to, and like, and what sports you was fucking with, man? Went to Central High School. I played baseball, and football, mm -hmm. played basketball in the hood, but I never played like basketball organized. Mm -hmm. But football and baseball played the shit out of that. Yeah. All star teams and all that in baseball. Like I say, when we was kids. We played a lot of sports, bro, mm -hmm. and we played baseball. Yeah. I don't be seeing a lot of black kids play at, baseball at no more. At all. And they don't understand, man. That's the, one of the richest <laughs> sports, bro. And you yeah. get the least injuries unless you get bean with a fastball. Yeah, or something. for sure. Yeah. But other than that, you don't. You, you know, you get a lot of money, and you know it's a longer trip to get to the league. But mm -hmm. baseball is half a sport, man. As far as getting that money, and it's, you know it's a, it's a chess match. It ain't exciting like football and basketball. That's up and down. So a lot of people don't fuck with baseball. They think it's too slow and ain't exciting, but it's, it's a chess match. Mm -hmm. yeah, if you really know the game of it, you'll respect it. But yeah, we play yeah. sports. No, for sure. Did you have like dreams like, damn, I'm gonna you know take it to the next level as far as you know football, baseball? 
Yeah, you know everybody think that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, you know, it's, it take a lot to do that. It's like one of the men chance had the people that's in the pros, man. So many cats that was close but didn't or it wasn't good enough. But, you know, we when I was playing, yeah, we had, and I was pretty good. Like I said, baseball, definitely, because I was, I was all-stars in baseball. Every year at the league, we played a little league. Mm -hmm. Made as a team um, called Northwest Detroit All-Stars. If you make the tournament team, you was one of the best in Northwest Detroit. Mm -hmm. And we, I was on that every year. I pictures all that, but um, like I say, cause we played it. We really was serious with that baseball and football. Yeah. But yeah, you know, it didn't pan out like that. So I kept doing. What I was doing just music shit. You know, mm -hmm. that's been my niche lately. Yeah. What position you play when you playing football? Like, like, like you... running back. Yeah. Um, play defense too, linebacker sometimes. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Them the two I like the most. Yeah, man. Yeah, my my football journey that shit was uh, like that lasted for like a month. Like I got hit yeah. real one time. That's why I say you know you know football for you if you when you once you get that that good hit. When you get hit that one time, like yeah, I get my shit back. Like I'm gonna stick with this hoop and shit, man. Hit on my pass though, I'm gone. Yeah, you gotta like hitting <laughs> to play football. That's yeah, you fuck that. Like that. Hell yeah. If you don't like that, you can get carried out, man. Mm hmm Now you you uh, talk about your first time in the studio, bro. Like you know, what I'm saying you was loving the music young and stuff like that. But how was your first time in the studio? Like was it was it a fucked up story? Cause like my first time in the studio, of course my my music was trash. So, but uh, <laughs> it's like it's like. It was different from just rapping in your room than putting that them headphones on, hearing the beat. You know what I'm saying? It's like it was more pressure on me. So how was your first time in the studio uh, for, for you? My first time in the studio, I just really was paying attention on detail, like what's around, like how this shit set up, and because like I say, we was young, we we experimented with this shit basically. Mm -hmm. My first time in the studio. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm watching other people who've been recording already and stuff like that. So you know what do they do in there? That was my experience. We didn't book like a session and go in the studio. My man had a studio. He went and took me over there. Mm -hmm. Let me show you my studio. Went in there and looked at it. So, you know, and that was it. We, ain't had, we had never recorded nothing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So we just learning the ambiance is about the studio. Yeah. He had the little egg carton shit all on the wall and shit. <laughs> it's old school. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And all that. So that's what I remember. Hey, what was that first song you recorded? You remember? Um, my first song that I recorded, I think, was "I'm Superior." Mm -hmm. a song called "I'm Superior." Okay, it was off that. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Same shit De La Soul used. Mm -hmm. Off that. Ooh. Yeah. Now, Gu uh, "Guilty as Charged," man, one of the best CDs to come out the city, in my opinion. But the song "Gangsters Only." Talk about that studio session. It's like y'all was fighting on that boy, like you know, what I'm saying going back and forth on that one. It's like you know, what I'm saying trying to one up each other, like. That was the first song I heard on the on the yeah. album that made me want to buy that's the album. That's the first song out. Yeah, yeah. yep. That was the song. So they played that song that that made me go ahead and want to buy your your stuff. Well, you know, bootlegged, but <laughs> that, that made... you lucky I ain't catch you. <laughs> you keep talking about this bootleg shit. <laughs> but uh, dog, no, talk about that song in general, dog. Like you, you and uh, Jay Nelly on that boy. Like talk about that. It's the story to it though. That same song. It's funny you picked that one to talk about. Mm -hmm. That song that actually was trick trick beat. Okay. Trick made the beat. Okay, he produced okay. Gangsta Damn. Song. Hey, I know that. And we in the basement. I've been fucking with Trick for like 25 years, man. People don't be knowing. Like I said, some of you, that's my documentary when I put out. You're going to see a lot of shit you don't know nothing about, bro. Yeah. Sessions and shit that wasn't released. And, mm -hmm. and um, Trick had, was making some tracks for me. And uh, he played that one. I'm like, that motherfucker cold. I want that one. He's like, I was using that one, OG. <laughs> I'm like, bro, let me get that motherfucker, bro. Yeah. We're going to kill that bitch. And he gave it to me. Mm -hmm. and, you know, me and Nutty got on it and did what we did. So that's yeah. how that went. And he produced 21 Gun Salute on that yeah, album. 21 Gun Salute. And um, yeah. I'm a boss, the original version. Yeah. Yeah, Trick, man, got a lot of talent. I always tell, that, tell people that in these interviews because sometimes we get caught up just on all the no fly the zone, zone shit and all that. You know, that's his passion today. That, how he loved the city, man. Mm -hmm. that, was, that was about it. Nigga tired of motherfucker coming here and not. Trying to do nothing but get money and get the fuck on. And niggas just fed up with that shit, man. Yeah. You know, so, but as far as a person, you get to know him, man. Nigga cool and a motherfucker, funny and shit. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> and talented, bro. Nigga play like three, four instruments when we was down in the bass working the piano, drums. Mm hmm And talented, bro. Yeah. Now, what, what took so long for Guilty as Charged to, uh, you know what I'm saying, to, to be on streaming um, platforms? Because I, I, I remember like, when I first, you know, getting titled on, you know, Apple uh, Music, I, I couldn't find it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I don't know, man, because I was getting older and it was kind of like just tired. I stopped for a minute, you know. I took a hiatus for a minute some of this shit after I did a couple of things. Cause I can say take care of my girl and shit. And, 
My grandmother had just died, so we had a decision to put her in a, a nursing home or take her with me. Mm -hmm. All this was going on during all that type of shit. Mm -hmm. Different deaths and people, you know, I fuck with. I just took a break from music for a minute. Still was doing movies and features with a lot of people, but I, I hadn't put out a project. Mm -hmm. But um, Give This Try was sitting there. I mean, it was a classic. I kind of like, it is what it is, I'm going to leave it. Mm -hmm. Everybody like, no, but the younger people, they ain't heard it. The other people ain't get it here. Cause like I say, it wasn't no social media. Yeah. But the streets knew, but like the whole world wasn't really hearing it. Yeah. So I actually did put it out for a minute, and then the motherfuckers took the money and then never paid me. Yeah. Um. Damn. Who the fuck we go? Distro kid. Yeah. Motherfuckers gonna meet some bands, bro. Mm hmm And never get my money for that shit, so I took that shit down again. Mm hmm So I'm gonna figure out another route on that, and um, you know, probably put it back out again. I might even do some videos on it that I never did. Mm -hmm. That's what I've been talking about just to do it. But yeah, that'd um, be hard. Hell yeah. You know, I'm working on this new project though, so this one I'm about to drop soon. This motherfucker cold too, so mm -hmm. you know. Now, when you when you was making that that album, did, could you see like, oh, yeah, this gonna be this gonna be that one. This gonna be a classic right here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Because we look at it now, like I said, one of the best albums ever come out the motherfucking city. Did you look at it back then like this? This that one? Like ain't nobody gonna be able to fuck with this? Just album. try to give out good music. Mm -hmm. I really don't get you know too caught up on if it's gonna be better than this person or that person. I just I'm gonna give them me mm -hmm. the best I can give them, and you know if it be what it's supposed to be, the rest gonna take care of itself because niggas mm -hmm. know what I'm gonna do on there. So mm -hmm. that's really it. And I had a lot to get off my chest. That was my first solo shit because mm -hmm. all this, I had been writing and doing music before we even did Rock Bottom. Mm -hmm. Some people don't know, they think that's like when we first started. Definitely part of my legacy, part of my career, big part of it. Yeah. Took us to newer heights with the rock bottom movement and all that. But we had an album out under Motor Living, which is my cousin Mo and them, before I even did anything at rock bottom. Mm -hmm. I knew rocking them from school. We all went to school together. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Central High, and Longfellow, Middle School, shit like that. But um, Tone Sky helped produce that, mm -hmm. Motor Living shit. Yeah. AK. Um, that was that was something we had already under our belt. We had live instruments and all that shit on, on that album. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, you know, I got a lot of music that niggas gonna hear, man. Put it like that. that we're gonna put that back out soon. For sure. Nobody really didn't get to hear it because my man Thrust passed. Mm -hmm. Thrust was on that album with us. And uh, we want people to hear more of him, too. So, we're gonna probably end up putting that back out, too. Yeah. Outside of your kids, is there any rappers out now that remind you of yourself? Mm, no, I don't know. Not, not right off. I can think of. Mm -hmm. I'm quite sure some kids that's rapping, young cats, mm -hmm. that's um, got some similarities or something. Yeah, that other people might see. Mm -hmm. But you know, I don't really listen to every single person that's out rapping. So it might be somebody I ain't even heard mm -hmm. that could make me think out oh, the remind me of me or something. But, yeah. I know. I think. I think everybody kind of doing what they doing now. This more. I'm on. The, I'm popping pills. I'm, I got yeah, I'm out that lean. I got my stick. Yeah, man. Um, ops. I got ops. Ops riding on the ops slide <laughs> on niggas. Yeah, that's so it. you know, we talk the street shit, but not every time. Yeah, know, we just sure. like, we touch on everything. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I don't know. I think this area look different. I ain't yeah. really heard nobody that made me think of me. Yeah. Would you dis um, disagree with my rap comparison with you uh, as a as JD Kiss? And I'm not saying like both of y'all like. Sound the same, but y'all both got, you know what I'm saying, unique voice. Y'all both never changed up no matter what. Both never followed trends, you know what I'm saying? Both came with your A game on songs, you feel me? Like, and, and uh, y'all just y'all self. That's why I always kind of like, you know what I'm saying, made that comparison. Is that a disrespectful comparison? Or off no, comparison? I ain't disrespectful. Jay to go, man. Mm -hmm. Jay the one of the dopest, man. Like I say, you know, I respect him, what he do. Mm -hmm. That ain't no bad comparison or nothing, you know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's that's respect. Yeah. You spit, I spit too, so. Yeah. Cause y'all y'all gonna, gonna come with, on every song y'all gonna come with it, yeah, but y'all gonna be y'all self. You feel me? A lot of times you see rappers trying to change up for a song or for the person on there, but y'all too. I, I say that because y'all come on the track and you know what you gonna get from you know what I'm saying from a J kiss from a big hurt. Yeah, I mean I heard you say that's why I say yeah I ain't, I ain't, I ain't tripping on that comparison. Mm -hmm. Now I do this thing called talk about the bars, man. I take a piece of a bar and we just you know what I'm saying talk about it. So on Motown, you gotta say hey, buy one to live the gangster life thanks to pop. Compared, compared to shit now, do you feel like people, they live in lies in their bars? Like, they want to live something because they see, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying, a side or a vessel or somebody. Just, it, everything is a lie. He's just trying to go ahead and copy and paste somebody's shit. Well, I don't think everybody lying. Some of these niggas really are like that. You yeah. Know, like, these young niggas now and some other shit, they be for real out here like that. Mm -hmm. So I don't think it's so much of the lie. I just think that we got more we can talk about. Mm -hmm. And nothing wrong touching on the street shit. We from the streets. We don't always touch on the street shit. Mm-hmm. 
But I think we can give people more variety. That's my whole thing with. Mm -hmm. Now, on uh, Twenty One Gun Salute, you said see they hate it because a nigga made off the because uh, a nigga on the block made it. When you was you get, getting the, you know what I'm saying being known in the city, did you have people that was kind of like you know what I'm saying might grow with you or just like mad to the success that you was getting because everybody knew who Big Hurt was? Did I grow with? Or just you know maybe like you know what I'm saying yeah, but like niggas who stay on your block and niggas knew who you is or even niggas on the outside just seem like they I mean, outside made it. niggas might have felt that way. It's always gonna be somebody hating. That's going mm -hmm. on right now. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? People are always hating and trolling and doing dumb shit, so I don't pay that shit on man, really, man. Yeah. You know, that's what they want you to do, but most part, it's been love, and nobody on my block do that, period. We, yeah, for sure. Uh, we'll draw that's we, we, we solidified over there, bro. You know, mm -hmm. nobody don't play like that. Now, this was a feature song, uh, What You Know. You said, uh, what you know about living in a house with no heat, and the landlord say he wants you out in the week. Talk about... A a bro give me a broke story that, that, st that stand out to you, man. Like, just a fucked up situation, a fucked up time in your life when you was growing up, bro. Shit, man. That's a lot of them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Straight up. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, it's just what I said. It's really, I'm telling you what it is. Mm -hmm. You got to get out in about a week, and you living out the shit gas off. You, you sitting there lighting up shit to keep you warm, kerosene heaters. We didn't sold hustling in spots like that. Mm-hmm. And in been times times we had to move. We was getting put out when I was living, when I was growing up, my mom and all them. So, yeah, that's real talk, you know. That's what it's about, man. The actual what I done went through, that one. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, uh, you did a song with my dog, Verdict, The City. You said, Detroit, Michigan, how the fuck we bankrupt, but we in the club buying the bar up. Talk about that, like, we be going through a photo situation, but we going to come out there, we going to stunt, we going to, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's just the yeah, grind in us. That's, that's called priorities. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, real. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yo, I don't know niggas that day, man, they riding around Benzes and all this big dope shit, jewelry on, clothes, newest clothes, J's, every time they come out. And mama's staring in the hood and barely living good. Mm -hmm. So, you know, people put they stock into what they want to put their stock into. For sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, that's what that's about. Yeah. A lot of times we bankrupt, but actually when I said that, you know what I'm saying? I was saying bankrupt in a different form, though. Like, cause people was hating on the city. It was a worldwide the Detroit bankrupt. <laughs> they made the news and all that. They had, had a financial manager coming here and all that. But I was saying it really in a positive way on that actual song. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, nigga, we in the bar all night getting money. I don't know where y'all heard that shit at. So mm -hmm. <laughs> that was more so catered to that that ideology of it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But the other one, they do be like that, too. Yeah, not you know for sure. You know what I'm saying? Y'all doing this and spending money here. And, <laughs> you know, like over here, it looked terrible, so. Yeah. Now, that same song, you said something, dog. Hey, I know my producer could go ahead and attest to it. You said, nigga, you can lose your life for a slight stare. There's a lot of times, you're like, what the fuck this nigga looking at? Like, why yeah. why, why we like that, bro? Like, <laughs> You know, everybody's super hard, bro. <laughs> everybody's super hard nowadays, bro, so. Yeah. You know, some that petty might make a nigga really no, for take sure. it there. Especially if he having a bad day already, no. this and that. Sometimes it'll take nothing but something simple, man. Makes somebody go off the edge. So. Yeah, man. Because I'm looking like, no, you go through it a lot. Though. You know when you're from here, especially if you go somewhere like, what the fuck is this nigga looking at? You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. Now, uh, Confessions, because that, that's my that's my hardest, uh, that's the hard song on the, on the album, My Eyes. I love that song. But you said, drunk a fifth uh, straight with no ice. Sometimes I just want to take a gun and escape this life. Escaping this life. Yeah, talk about talk about that, bro, bro. Like, I think niggas feel like that sometimes. At some point, mm -hmm. not everybody, but if you're just going through so much all the time, sometimes you be like, I want a beer. Women, men, whoever it may be. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? You get tired of just dealing with the struggle sometimes. So yeah, that's just a, me speaking for people on that part. Mm -hmm. I never felt like that. Yeah, but you know, I know people that did. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we do songs. It ain't always every line is what we oh, no, did. For sure. yeah, yeah. Some of it be our story. Some of it be we telling our man's story. We you know keep the names confidential and shit like that. So mm -hmm. confessions is a little bit of all that. Yeah, it's some of my shit. It's some of my nigga shit. People I know shit that really need, niggas need to hear. Mm -hmm. You know. So yeah. Like with the, go back on with the group rock, rock bottom, and you know what I'm saying y'all y'all homies y'all grew up together. I want to ask you, like, when you see a lot of these groups or a lot of these people that come, not necessarily maybe rappers, but, like, manager, uh, rapper, or producer, and rapper, when money gets into play, shit fucks up, you know what I'm saying? But on the grind, everything is all good. What, what, do, you, what do you think is the cause for, of that? Like, the fuck, that, that money fucks up a good situation that it once was before, you know what I'm saying, y'all got paid off for what y'all do? 
Cause you see a lot of shit like, damn, what happened? Like that was that was good, but then when that money came in there, cause it's called not proper planning. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? A lot of young cats, they don't think anybody can get this money, man. They just doing what they do, and when that opportunity comes, they not really prepared to how to take their money and, and and manage it and do the right thing and come together and realize, look, let's keep this money and make more money with the money. Mm -hmm. Let's put invest in this. Let's do this. You just want to splurge. You ain't had shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Most young niggas from the hood don't have nothing, bro. Mm -hmm. Ain't have much. So when they get that money, they want to show people that I'm doing all right now. Mm -hmm. Look at me. Yeah. You know, they want to take care of their people. They want to make sure their mama good. Mama been struggling all these years trying to take care. And they don't be, that money got to still make money. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I don't care if they get you $10 million. If you're just doing nothing but spending you ain't making no money. It's over. You're going to blow the money eventually. Yeah. You see that with athletes all the time. They'll be having $100 million contracts and still yeah. in their broke 10, 20 years later. Mm -hmm. You'll be like, how you blow $100 million? Y'all yeah. yeah, don't be understanding niggas. Bills be 20 times on sure. niggas. Yeah. They take care of all their sisters, mama, paying everybody's notes, everybody's bills. You keep doing that, you don't have no money coming in. You ain't investing something that's really going to make you more money mm -hmm. you gonna that well gonna run dry yeah yeah, yeah. period that's just how it works but and coming from the hood why do why do it be like that like for us like it's pressure like i make it out now i gotta take care of everybody you know what I'm saying? of course you're gonna take care of your moms and the people around you but why do we feel like we gotta take care of everybody and then when we don't why do we gotta be a sellout or we don't know we forgot where we come we came from i mean that's somebody saying that kind of shit you're a sellout you don't know you can't because you ain't do this for me don't nobody owe you nothing man mm-hmm you know what I'm saying? If a motherfucker look out for you, he look out for you. Mm -hmm. It's up to you to take that shit and either fuck it up and <laughs> squander it and do what you want, gave this to you, or you can take it and be like, you know what, I'm going to take this and do this and that and I'm going to stay on from this shit. Mm -hmm. It's about your mentality. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's what's wrong with people. They feel entitled, bro. Yeah. Everybody think they supposed to get something. Certain people, you they know you're going gonna to look out for. If a nigga your right hand, you're going to look out for him. You're mm -hmm. going to be good with him. But everybody that I said hi to, I can't give you no money. <laughs> yeah, for sure, yeah. For sure, and that's everybody how you get Everybody I took a picture with, it. I can't even say, here, you want something? Yeah. You know what I mean? That's how, I, you know, it don't work like that, bro. I always felt like when they get some money, he should give his family something they can make more money with. A, a exactly. business to start off. For with. sure. Something like that so they can keep making them some money. Yeah, yeah. So they have to keep coming to you. Mm -hmm. That's like this old school saying, you can teach a nigga, you can give a nigga fish. Or you can teach him how to fish. Yeah, eat forever. He teach you how to fish. You eat forever. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to keep going him and brown another fish. Yeah, for sure. Man, yeah. You eat your own fish, like, man. I know you gave me some fish last week because, so, you know, nigga hungry, ain't nothing wrong looking out, you know, and showing love to people here and there. You know what I'm saying? It'd be a token of appreciation because niggas know you've been around them and supporting them. You've been seeing me come through this and I done made it. So yeah. I don't look out me people I can, but yeah. at some point it got to be a cutoff, bro. I don't care how many how much money you get. Mm -hmm. You know, they gotta fend for themselves. My folks grown, man. So. For sure. For sure. Now it, it, what you saying that to, you know, teaching somebody how to fish they eat forever. I, I just randomly thought about Eminem again because a lot of people kinda like get on him about not helping the city, not coming back as far as like the rappers. And I, I disagree with that wholeheartedly because I felt like he put on for the city with his boys he grew up with. He put he put them on. So like you said, so they was able to go ahead and put their people on. So I feel like he get a little bit too much pressure on, 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 on you know, saying doing a feature with a Detroit rapper or doing this when, when he came out, he helped out his people. That's from the city. So, like I was, I never understood why people was like kind of like always talking bad about about him on that level. I don't know either. I mean, you know, I just feel like don't nobody owe you nothing, bro. I don't mm -hmm. care who it is. It's some probably a few other things people feel he could have done or whatever, but for the most part, like I said earlier, the streets half of them don't even really fuck with his music. Like, that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It ain't like they coming to all the shows and he was performing here or the hip hop shop and support. You know, they knew he got on his white boy who could rap, but they really don't play his music. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if the connection even was like it should be mm -hmm. between like if some artists here they still in the hood they can pull up and. Kick it with you and shoot hoop out there with you, everybody. For, you know, <laughs> I mean, for real, some of the for young sure. cats not is getting it. They from the hood for real. Mm -hmm. So the connection is more felt with the community. Mm -hmm. They feel the love. They feel the niggas support them, all that. I don't think niggas really was fucking with him like that. Yeah. You know, it's more white fans and some blacks. I ain't saying all of them, but a lot of the street cats, like I said, his music wasn't that banging the club shit. And that's yeah. what we like here. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people didn't listen to his music. Then his dialogue is. You know, it's questionable sometimes. I respect it from a lyricism standpoint. Mm -hmm. But a lot of cats, all that, my mama killing his mama. And, you know, going back and forth with his girlfriend, <laughs> about Haley. And, 
for sure. Even though he had other songs that was dope as fuck, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? In my opinion. Mm-hmm. But he don't have a song niggas bang in the club, so mm-hmm. they really don't really be fucking with him like that. So to me, who are you really obligated to if they don't really fuck with you? Yeah. Not saying he could, he could have reached out. Now he might have. Had, I don't know who all he reached out to or didn't. Like I say, I did business with him and Ob Trice and I'm on Interscope. Mm-hmm. So it's love and respect for me to him, yeah. make us to him. Not for sure. You know what I'm saying? But you know, there is music. And like I say, it ain't the music we really bang in clubs and stuff like that. So that's one thing. You know what I mean? And I don't feel like nobody owed nobody nothing. I was in another interview with Kid L one time. And they were saying, because Big Shine has said some stuff about me you out, yeah. on um, the Orient Show. Chance, yeah. And, you know, and they was like, you think he should have? I mean, not even the same age, bro. <laughs> man, I owe me nothing. I'm like, I'm going to be his father, bro. For sure, yeah. He yeah. went to school right after my son, <laughs> before my son, my yeah. youngest son, Dewan and him. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if he, get, if he say, like, my music and all that, that's cool. Big Much up, love, yeah. my nigga. I don't, you know, owe me nothing. Niggas got to quit thinking they entitled. No. They that, don't owe you nothing, bro. Man, that's where everything That's the whole thing. They don't owe you nothing. For sure. If they do, that's love. Yeah. You know what I mean? But they don't. You can't look at me why he ain't do this and that. They don't owe you nothing, bro. Yeah. Nah. Your name ain't on his contract. Yeah, point blank. So, you know, get up and get your own shit, man. That's, and you feel better when you do because you don't owe. Got no nigga talking about I did this I for did you. this for you. I don't want to put them on and I did and that. So, a lot of times it's better that way. Yeah, but that's because a lot of people shy away from the grind. You feel mm-hmm. me? A lot of people don't want to go ahead and work. They want that shit the easy way. They want it to be hand, hand given to them. You feel me? It, like that's why you know you gotta teach your kids now. Like you gotta work for that shit, bro. Yeah. I teach my kids right now. You gotta work for it. Ain't yeah. nothing gonna be given to you, dog. You know what I'm saying? So you gotta go ahead and learn that shit. Cause we ain't we coming from households with you know what I'm saying. Sometimes dad missing, so we not even really learning that shit growing up. Yeah. And we just expect, oh, yeah, hey, man, that shit supposed to be given to me. I ain't supposed to work hard and do shit for it. So yeah, man. Yeah. yeah. Hey, y'all niggas work for that shit, cuz. I get y'all shit together, man. For real, for real. Now you spoke on early on, you know, being a family man and stuff like that, having kids. How did you feel when your kids wanted to follow behind and be a rapper too? A lot of times, uh, rap, you know, OG rappers don't don't want their kids to even get into this business. How did you feel when your kids came to you and say, you know, what I'm saying if they came to you and wanted to do music? That's the thing they didn't come to me. Yeah, I'm about to say if he had the wedding, of course they, he had them. They, uh, <laughs> he ain't talking yeah, about no they music. Come to me. They played football. <laughs> they both played football. I know. I mean, your oldest son played with Cuz, right? Well, What's that's that? literally yeah. They both yeah. played with Cuz, but they went to high school, played too. My mm-hmm. youngest son, baby, already won two state championships with Cash Tech. Mm-hmm. He played over there, J. Ru Campbell, and all of them. Oh, Mike Weber oh, went to Ohio in? State. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They was number seven team in the country. Hell yeah, it was fucking yeah. He played over there, won two back to back state titles, first in class. A Division One in the Michigan history. Mm-hmm. Now King won one in Division Two, but that was with a Cub too, right there. Nick Perry. Yeah. Played with King. He had set the state record for sacks. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? You can look it up. Went to play for Green Bay. Not getting off the subject, but they needed the documentary on the Cubs. West Side Cubs. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a lot. It's, it's a lot of shit. They're gonna leave from the Cubs and, and, and yeah. still going right now. And two, three more finna go right after this draft. For sure. So like I say, um, we also say it should be a documentary yeah, on the King versus Cavs. Yeah, that's that's good. But the Cubs, that's still going right now. To me, it's still giving another ten years. For sure. Yeah. And you have a lot of shit show. But yeah, for sure. The Cubs been doing this shit since like the eighties and nineties, bro. You know what was that rumor that like, everybody always said the Cubs was you know saying lying about ages and shit. Yeah, <laughs> goddamn logic, bro. He put that. I, I, I never seen him do it. I ain't gonna lie to you. Yeah, I, know, was, I know you heard that rumor though. I mean, everybody said it when yeah. they winning all the time. <laughs> exactly. all that. That's how they had a dynasty. But yeah. you know, every dynasty kind of ends. So now somebody else running to get their turn. It is what it is. Hey, but. not to cut you off, dog. How are you uh, as as that as that uh that sports father? Are you one of them dudes that like the coach? Like, damn, this nigga here he come. No, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> Most of the coaches fuck with me. They fuck with my music. They know you. Oh, what, bro? And they know I'm gonna cut there, and you know, let them do their job, and don't be trying to coach on the sideline. Oh my god, man. Duh. You know what I mean? It's only one time I had to go crazy. One time, oh, talk about that. Then. <laughs> Because the nigga was playing my son, wasn't playing my son. And okay. he was a beast. Okay. A young hurt. And then when he finally got in, we had an argument about something. He never came out ever, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He went straight to A team and started out the B team. All of that. So that was the only time because it was obvious. For sure, for sure. I don't know what kind of gripe he had, but they, we ended up being cool years down the line. The coach. <laughs> but um, but not getting off the subject for my sons, they played football. I never was like... um. You're going to come and rap, and I'm going to teach you. I wasn't no Joe Jackson. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I was lining them up and taking them with the switch and hitting them. They ain't do it right <laughs> now. Because like you just said, sometimes you don't want your kids to go through the same pressure you don't went through. Mm-hmm. Or not even pressure, but just having to deal with pressure from not living up to what you do. Mm-hmm. If they don't. 
So they had to rap because they wanted to rap. I I never pushed them to they play sports. Mm -hmm. And like I say, DeWine won two state titles of cast. You know, Hurt went to Crockett. Mm -hmm. He's old uh, East English now. Yep. He came in right to Brandon Graham left. He and, and was lying back right under him. That was his man, BG. Mm -hmm. Shout out to BG. But, um, yeah, man, I never did that. They did it. I started seeing little papers with rhymes on them. I'm like, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Am I right? And I'm like... <laughs> So that's Young Herc, because Baby Herc wasn't even rapping then. He mm -hmm. just still playing sports, and he was still young. Young Herc started first. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he had me hear some one time. I was like, it was decent. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, he went back, same thing. I give him that same invite, and he can't coming back with shit. And then now, to this, not right now, mm -hmm. nigga, he, he'll lose you if you don't listen real good. Man. For sure, for sure. You know what I'm saying? So that's what he wanted to do, and he did it. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. Same with Baby Herc. He followed his brother and what I did. And he started rapping. So. Yeah. Do you feel like it's pressure on them just because of who you are? Because like when I, I made sure when he, he was on the show, I didn't want to, you know what I'm saying, be mentioning his pops and stuff like that because he's his own person. Right. Do you feel like it's pressure on them be, because of the success that you had in the city? It could be some because they want to see, okay, let me see. If, or it could be hate. Like, man, we tired of the hurts. <laughs> big hurt, young hurt, baby hurt, fuck the hurts. <laughs> and, you know. It be snake race sometimes. Yeah. Like, man, they, niggas clowns, man. Like, <laughs> like, man we tired these niggas. So hurt, sometimes man. it be like that. So it'd be that respect. I mean, that response. But if you even give them a chance, but so I don't know. Mm -hmm. But most people, when they listen to it, they respect what they bring to the table. They not into like the pill popping and uh, and uh, pistol play type shit. They really more in lyricists and mm -hmm. you know they shit structured like that with topics and different shit. They like yeah. to talk about. You know, Dewan do a lot of shit for the women and shit like that. Mm -hmm. um, baby hurt, and um, you know they talk a little street shit, but it's you know it's a limit. Like I said, they not riding that every time. They ain't mm -hmm. bragging about money every time. They more show showing you their skill set, mm -hmm. and that's what they do. So do you feel like this, this like that being skill set, they, their lyricism, like I said, Verdict is a, is a great is a great rapper and stuff like that, but. They, they they kill you. They, they bar you. They give, give you bars. It's going to be a good song, a structure song. It's going to be a topic. You feel like that type of music, it's, it's hard to get the love off that music, bro? Because like, like you said, a nigga come with a, a, bull, a, a hard beat, catchy hook, bullshit lyrics, and they popping. I think it's coming back. Mm -hmm. I'm starting to see more of it now, even in battle rap and stuff like that, with, with how that's emerging. Mm -hmm. But I still think it's dominated more so by the... Um, you know, the, the drill rap type shit and that type of f format more so. The P.L. Poppins era and all that. Mm -hmm. That's kind of more dominating the Percocet era. Mm -hmm. You know, Futures and people like that that kept that going. and Still, that's kind of more at the for forefront. Mm -hmm. But I think it's enough music for everybody, bro. Whatever you want to talk about, you should be able to talk about it, man. For everybody sure. don't want to do the same thing. Y'all might want to eat hamburgers every day. I want some pizza. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Try these hamburgers. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> yeah. just give people what they want to hear, man. Let people do what they do, man. And let's respect music in all aspects and all different forms, man. Mm -hmm. That's what we had growing up. For sure. We had street shit. You want to hear in WA, Ice T, Ice Cube. You want to hear some informative shit that's pop black power type shit you got public enemy x clan paris you want to hear you know what it says some story shit you got slick rick you got it's different shit we had variety now it's just like everything kind of like you know more so one way yeah you know what i'm saying and you know i think it's just enough room for everybody to do different stuff that's all what would, what would life be for uh big hurt without music terrible man i love music bro yeah Music and people don't understand music way more important than television and movies and all that. We watch it because we love to look at that. But when niggas come on from the joint, bro, the first thing they talk about how nigga music kept them going and kept them going through that shit, mm -hmm. got them through it. Mm -hmm. They don't say watching TV. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I'm just saying, real talk. That's yeah. why the term music called the savage beast come from. Mm -hmm. They ain't say the internet. They say music. Something about music, man. Shit can touch your soul, certain shit, man. You know what I'm saying? Make you feel a certain way when you're feeling down. Lift you up, shit like that. What's, what's so that music song? Music important, bro. What's that song for you that that, that, that kind of like that means something to you? That that's not your music. Somebody else's. What what's that song for you? For me, I think about like DMS slipping. I think about you know what I'm saying that that song a lot. That's one of my you know what I'm saying favorite songs ever. Yeah, so what's that song? Tough. What's that's that song a lot for you? Of song. I don't have no one on that one. Mm -hmm. I couldn't dare sit and say one song. I listen to rap shit that could make me feel like that. And I can go to some shit like Marvin Gaye, What's Going On, and mm -hmm. shit like that. You know what I mean? Real talk, because I be vast like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? With my music shit, I don't just listen to rap all day. Yeah. But I fuck with rap heavy. I rap and I love it. So mm -hmm. 
it's not really one song. Different songs make me feel different ways. Yeah. So, you know, some might make me political. Like I said, I go listen to P.E. and Marvin Gaye was going on and them type of topics. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, depending on I want to get fired up, I might listen to something different. Yeah, for sure. I, can't, I got so much different music I like, I don't got one. Like yeah. That. All right, I'm a, I ain't asked anybody this question, man. I I, I kind of like, I didn't know if I was going to ask you this question. Cause, <laughs> but uh, outside of death or somebody being sick, when the last time Big Hurt cried? And what was the reason? Uh, I know if you, you know, I didn't know if you was too, too OG to be here, you know. No, man, that's fake shit. Nigga. Yeah, because they like, I don't cry. I never cry. I'm hard. Yeah, you, fuck, you know, man. of course. Especially of course, somebody you love, bro. Ain't yeah. never known, that's called relief and stress, bro. Shit sure. kills you, stress kills. I cried not too long ago about my mama, man, because she was going through a lot of strokes and different shit. Mm -hmm. And just think about how she used to be. You yeah. know what I'm saying? How you can let your mental illness can carry you the rest of your life, bro, if you ain't strong mentally. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? To see her, how she going through the shit she going through. And then all her friends, like my friends, they mamas, them all doing good and they ain't holding her some of them. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it'd be tough seeing her like that sometimes, man. But, you know. Yeah. That's probably the last time. For sure. Yeah. What what what's some what's something that you always like think about as far as like you and your mom, maybe a story or something that y'all did, whatever, or just a moment before she got sick that you always, you know, think about. I mean, ain't a lot of them, bro. Like I said, my mom had been like this for most of my life. Damn. I was a baby, I was a kid when she was working oh, shit. The wow. and all that. So it wasn't like it was no moment where we sat up and talked about my first girlfriend. Yeah. <laughs> None of that kind of shit by the time that was happening. My mom was already going back for the mental hospitals and all that. But mm -hmm. I think that, you know, I got pictures, though, a lot of pictures of us when we was with her. Mm -hmm. She showed us a lot of love and took care as much as she could, man. For sure, for sure. So I always just commend her for being a strong woman and take care of me and my sister mm -hmm. without a father. Yeah. And that's what I get from her, you know what I'm saying? More anything, it wasn't really no talks. You know what I'm saying? So that was it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. She was a good person, man. Still is, not was. Mm -hmm. But when she was in her right state of mind, you know what For I'm sure. saying? Beautiful woman, man. You know what I'm saying? Love the party. Mm -hmm. From what I see in the pictures and all that, when they was all young, her, yeah. her friends and them. Damn, I miss picture albums, man. Such media niggas ain't got good. picture albums no more. Yeah, we got we got the albums, but I got a lot of pictures. Man, go grandma house look, look at them same pictures every yeah. Thanksgiving. They could be talking yeah. about damn, mind you, that bro. That's old school the picture Bro, albums. might have put that in something. Yeah, yeah for sure. I'll be upstairs. This is my grandma crib. Like she passed, but my granddad's still upstairs. And you go through those motherfucking picture albums, man. Be man for real. Right. Bro. Look like they was living life. Now, uh, young nigga shit versus some shit I've been through. What's some what's some things that you believe in as a youngin? That you like, dog, what the fuck I was thinking back then? Something that you don't agree with that you was, you know saying, your way of thinking when you was a youngster. Hmm. When I was young, I was more like, fuck all these other niggas about us. Mm -hmm. Which I think a lot of young niggas be like that. Because mm -hmm. that's what you be territorial. Mm -hmm. Wherever hood you from, it's my fucking young and it's our hood. But when you get older and start learning that, when you're doing music, whether you're selling fruit, clothes, <laughs> For sure. you got to network with a lot of other people, bro, to get yeah. that shit out here and really get off the ground. Mm -hmm. So learning to not be um, inverted or introverted, mm -hmm. where it's just fuck everybody else, it's just us over here in this hood. You don't sell a lot of records, you just in your hood, bro. Yeah, for sure. You got to sell records, east side niggas, west side niggas, southwest, and beyond. Piney Yacket, so... Learning not to be like that. That's the big. Other than that, I was solid as young. I never really had too many things. I felt like, why was I doing this and that? Mm -hmm. We hustled and did all this shit in the street like everybody else did, you know, doing the cracker and all that. But I always was trying to figure out, we got to do the, what's the next move from this shit? Mm -hmm. And then music worked out, so. Yeah, for sure. A little bit. Anything you would have changed that with your approach to music? No. No regrets? Because I ain't have it either. I never went through a quick spur. A lot of people that get it on, get on quick. <laughs> They the ones that need to probably change something. They, they lost it. They got on quick and lost it. I went through the through the mud before I got on. Mm -hmm. When I dropped Guilty as Charge, I was 30 something in. Mm -hmm. Some of these niggas got albums out 16, 17, <laughs> yeah, 18. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So, no, I learned a lot, bro. Went yeah. through a lot of grind and a lot of, you know, putting it together. So, so you said you was, you was 30 when that came out? When that came out. I mean, I've been rapping for a long no, time. No, for sure. Yeah, when, when that, that came first out? album, solo album, yeah. So on the way on, from in between that first time you started rapping in that album, was there a time that you wanted to be like, man, I don't, I don't see shit with this music as far as being a rapper. I'm, I'm good. No, because I never got in it for that. I got it because I love rapping. Mm -hmm. 
So that's the difference, bro. When you do something you love, it ain't no hard thing. You doing it because I love this shit. Mm -hmm. It's the shit you don't want to do that you're doing for money that's hard to keep doing. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, this shit ain't really, I ain't getting Look at go hoop because he love to hoop out in the hood. For sure. If you go to lead, hey, now nah, I'm getting paid for this shit. It ain't mm -hmm. looked at like work. Work is something you don't want to go do. Put them boxes up and stack them 400 high <laughs> in four rows. Okay, I'll be back in the hour. That's work. <laughs> yeah, for sure. What the fuck, fuck you mean, stack these? <laughs> when you're doing something you want to do, it's just, hey. <laughs> you know what I mean? For sure. That's the thing. For sure. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I learned it from the ground up, man. Like I say, got a lot of doors slammed, a lot of doors open. Mm -hmm. And just learned to her why I didn't have it easy. I had no rich cousin or somebody in the block that took us and said, look, we're going to put all y'all on, huh? I got this kind of money. We're going to shoot all these videos. You know, we was doing it with our own resources, our own little money. Mm -hmm. Bartering with niggas. Kicking. We, we ain't had a lot of money coming up, man. Yeah. So basically, Big Hurt said, I could put our album and get him on a feature. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> I'm lost. <laughs> no. That's a quick little joke. That's one of them. Doo -doo 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 -doo. No, because you said you were saying when you was there, though, I'm going to put out an album, dog. Yeah, yeah. but you see, know, I'm not rapping, right, but my own solo shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I say, man, I had like, like five projects I had been on before that. But that was my first solo shit, all me. Yeah. Besides Jay Nutty and Color of the Features, my man Beretta, Miss Corona. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's so, yeah. Hard, yeah. so that's all it was. And it was a hit, though. Yeah. How you the feel nigga that put shit? out something third. That's photo. Yeah. A nigga put out something late and he old and all that, but it's just hot when you put it out. Yeah. Because now you done put some bullshit out at that age. Like, God damn. <laughs> yeah, like, what the fuck? That you shit doing? was a, a classic. So, yeah, you know. Yeah. So, you said, by it being your first solo uh, project, when it was done, dog, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas banging in the wheel. Because, like you said, we ain't have social media to play music or repost. We, you hearing niggas playing your song, Bell Owl, you know, different shit like that. How you feel once you that was an accomplishment, bro? Like you, that was your first time dropping something by yourself. Like how you feel after the process was over? I mean, it was good. Reception was great. Mm -hmm. Like I say, that's why it's what it is now. So that was love. I felt good about it. I felt like you know, you know, um, task done, task completed, mm -hmm. job well done. You know what For I'm sure. saying? But we had the same response with Rock Bottom. Mm -hmm. So you know, I've been at getting the love, but that was my first solo shit. For sure. So yeah, it felt good, and people loved it, and it was it's part of history now. Yeah, hell yeah. Got me the rap snack chip and all that. Yeah, that yeah, yep, yep. So it got to be something. Oh no, for sure, for sure. What, me, what was the first adult decision Big Hurt made? When you like, damn, life is life is getting real. Like I ain't no little like you know what I'm saying I got to take care of some shit. Well, that shit probably when I had my first kid, me and my wife. Mm -hmm. I got a kid. Yeah. That's different than stuff now. I ain't just no running around me. I got a kid on the way. Mm -hmm. And that made me step on game up too, man. It made me slow down a lot of dumb shit. Mm -hmm. One thing about having kids, I've noticed with a lot of cats, either they go get their shit together or they end up being worse, seem like. Yeah. yeah. For real, I don't know why that, but that's how it be. Ain't no in between, really. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They either straighten up, start taking care of their business as a man, or they end up just popping kids all over this motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So... It made me grow up, step up, man. You did, know what I'm saying? With the absence of your father being around, did that play a part of making sure, like, I, I'm going to make sure I'll be the best father I can be? Yeah, definitely. And plus, my grandfather raised me. We used to talk about how morals, man. Take care of your responsibility. Take care of your business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I was raised. I was never spoiled. That's yeah. the whole problem with niggas. They be spoiled. And I and feel like niggas owe them something. Because mm -hmm. they done been given so much all the time. So when they get out in the world by themselves, mama can't do this and that, daddy no more. They can't adapt, mm -hmm. a lot of these niggas. So I'm glad I was taught how I was. Of course, you know, you always want to live better than maybe we was living at that time, but it made me be t strong in the street, made me have tough skin, it made me get out here and take my responsibilities and not be expecting nothing from nobody. Like For I sure. said earlier about this, don't nobody owe me nothing. Yeah. That's why I was raised. Go get it. Get your own shit. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah, because, man, I was a father at a young age at 20, man. It's like... With, with being with or with the mom or not, I'm gonna make sure I'm always gonna be there for my kid, take care of my kid. At 20 years old, like I said, my dad passed when I was 13, so it's like, mm -hmm. shit, I gotta make it happen. A lot of people doubt me because I was young, say I was selfish, I couldn't, you know, saying yeah. I had no kid, but it's like, once I had that kid, like you said, I got better. Like it wasn't about me no more. It was about, you know, what I'm saying it was about him. And the other two kids I had after that, that first being a dad at a young age with that first one, it made it made it a lot easier with, you know, saying my second and third kid. You feel me? So, yeah, man. Shout out to the dad. See, I never understood because I know a lot of people that have kids, like you say, young or old, but when shit go wrong with the mom, they don't even fuck with the kids no more. Yeah. 
Yeah, you, know you can't saying? do that. That's the thing about it, man. You, they didn't ask beer, so mm -hmm. still your responsibility. Even if, you, if she a dirty, trifling slut, you got to <laughs> yeah. no, sure. you had it, about yeah. <laughs> Take care of your kids, though. They ain't got nothing to do with them. No, for sure. No. Sometimes that's what it be, man. The, motherfucker don't, the person they dealing with through the kids, they like, I ain't fucked that. I ain't dealing with none of this shit. You mm -hmm. can't do that, though. No, you can't. Take care of your kids, man. Hell yeah, hell yeah. Now, I always ask this question to people, man. Just hypothetically, if you can... Making a band back when Diddy had to make a band, you know what I'm saying? He put five people together. Hypothetically, if it could be you and four other people make an album industry wise, dead or alive, who would be on that, on that Big Hurt album that you would want to work with? Producers, singers, rappers, whoever? Um, Pop. Okay. Rock Kim. Okay. Um, Pop, Rock Kim. Right, throw Kane in there. Okay. And then my sons. Oh, hell yeah. That's hard. My sons. Yeah, that's hard. Let's see what they do. Hell yeah, that's hard. That's hard. That's it. How you want to be remembered, man? How you want people to remember Big Hurt? You know, just solid, man. Just a regular person, man, from the hood, bro. Mm -hmm. Keep it 100, who fuck with the hood, fuck with the community. And never been no different, bro. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? I'm just, I wanted, I'm a product of the city, bro. Mm -hmm. Detroit for life. East side, west side, the whole motherfucking nine. Mm -hmm. You know, just being a, a person with humility at the same time. Yeah. So, that's it, man. Just staying solid, bro. Yeah, yeah. And you've been through a lot, like you mentioned, like, you know what I'm saying, growing up and then your mom and stuff. Like, what advice do you got for somebody that might be, you know, got a dream or a passion for something, but real life is getting in the way of, of their goals that they that they need to meet or want to meet. We well, gotta be strong, man. Like I said earlier, that you know the strong survive, we need strong survive. That's saying true. It mm -hmm. might sound cliche because you hear it, strong survive, whatever, <laughs> yeah. but it's true, bro. Cause shit'll break you. A lot of shit can break you. Just said you lost your father and yeah. different stuff you went through. You could have went through some mental shit from that. Mm -hmm. I didn't have my father. You know what I'm saying? He passed. I really didn't know him. Yeah. That's why I'm probably saying he passed away and I didn't cry. My anger wouldn't let me yeah, feel for a stranger. Yeah. I feel all that, bro. Mm -hmm. That's what made Pac what he is. He say the shit that nigga be done went through that shit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know my father. He left him while I was walking. Mm -hmm. I was still like nine months, eight months or something. And then when I finally saw him, I was 16. Yeah. So rest in, rest in peace. I never felt like hatred, like I hate him, uh, uh, nothing like yeah. that. I don't know him. Yeah. I just know he wasn't there. My grandfather filled that void. Mm -hmm. And then niggas in the hood, my, or my uncles, or whoever else. So, you know, that's my approach on that one, man. For sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, man. Be strong. Keep going. Thick skin, man, if you want to make it. No, for sure. Negative shit is your fuel. Supposed to happen, Mm -hmm. Everything just be a pat on the back and they love you and bubbles and roses, man. That ain't reality. Mm -hmm. Suppose I had the negatives and the haters and different stuff. That's what make you thrive to shut motherfuckers up. Yeah. And to prove motherfuckers wrong. So expect it and take it. Mm -hmm. Make that negative a positive. That's how you make it. Man. No, for sure. Whatever you know. For sure. That's why I had to, you know, talk to my little brother, man. Because like I said, we lost both our parents. And my brother's seven years younger than me. So he like 18, 17. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Both parents gone. So... It's like I tell them all the time, like, you got to look at that. It's like motivation. Even though it's fucked up and mm -hmm. it's hard not having your parents around because you never get another parent. You feel me? No. And you young, but you still got to find a way to, to navigate. Like, with me, I just think about my mom's and shit, the shit that she went through, catching the bus, you know what I'm saying? So that's that's my fuel to be a better parent. That's my fuel to be a better husband. That's just be, to be a better person, just thinking about the shit that she did for me, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, yeah, so, but no, that's real shit. You got to take stuff and make it a positive. It don't just necessarily come that way. You got to... Fits mentally take that shit and like look I can sit there and sulk about this shit and let it get me down or I can realize I, I still got my own life to live I gotta get out and do it and make the most of the life I got mm -hmm. I'm still here my I ain't one though I'm still here I gotta live yeah you know it just hurt when you not people not on that journey with you no more <laughs> yeah dog you know what I mean but they spirit here and I yeah. believe they truly is here spiritually I believe in that yeah be too many things that happen in my life I know motherfuckers spiritually still watching us so for sure. Take that and just strive, man, and let that fuel, let that be the fuel for your, uh, you know, for your fire, man. For sure. Hell yeah. yeah. Hell yeah. Now, uh, I end everything off, man, towards the end of the, the uh, interview. Uh, top three. I give you a category, whatever. You give me your top three. Top three moments in life. Uh, one, definitely my kid was born. Mm -hmm. uh, when I met my wife, because that's why I'm who I am now. Yeah. And when we first started rapping, mm -hmm. because we really 
True thought leaves the shit, man. <laughs> yeah, for sure. It, it found out what is is a hell of a moment because it let me show how far and came. Yeah, for sure. You know. <laughs> hell no. Top three childhood celebrity crushes. I said childhood. I want you, you know. Childhood. <laughs> oh shit. It's a couple of. Did I, you talking about like TV or real life? Or? No, celebrity. Not Keisha from around the corner. Oh, celebrity. Yeah, celebrity. Yeah. Uh, Thelma from Good Times was one for oh, sure. Oh shit, she was a brick house boy. Thelma, so they could have cold peanut butter boy. Love you though, wife. You know that. <laughs> Thelma was one. Uh, I don't know. Thelma just popped right out. Janet Jackson for sure, man. For sure. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Not the penny when she was too still a kid then, but the one when she was on like uh. What's that show and shit? Uh, where they had the little... Uh, uh, what's he, Tootie? Tootie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All that type of shit. <laughs> but, um, who else? Probably... Um, mm -mm -mm. Jane Kennedy was a bad motherfucker, too. That's probably before y'all time, though. Probably. <laughs> Jane Kennedy's cold. Yeah. Type that name in, though. You'll yeah, no, for sure. You be like, yeah, you see Jane what it Kennedy. is? Jane Kennedy. Yeah, Thelma. Yeah. I was like, full and seeing that shit was like, kind of like yeah. straight. Like, yeah, Thelma. <laughs> Thelma still look good right now. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, Thelma still look yeah. good. Hell yeah, dog. But it's more than that, honestly. It's just, you said three. I'm just three I can think right off. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But... Yeah, well, you know. When, when you was younger, did you have like you know what I'm saying on on your wall? Did you have like a you know poster like rap girls and shit like that? Like, no, nah, I ain't do that corny shit. I ain't oh like, shit, I was had Playboy boy. books. We look at that shit. <laughs> and I was sneaking my uncle in the Playboy book, all these little porn books and shit. Like that. <laughs> I ain't care about that beauty the week jet shit. I just leave that in the book. Okay, I yeah. Put it on my wall, that was rap shit on my wall. Yeah, that's what you talk about. Like you know how like saying? you know say social media. Like back then, you had to go and like me, I had to go get my uncle little porn stash. Like he yeah. had little porn stash and shit. I'd be like, yeah. all right, bet I can get. Me a yeah. little, see me some little Chinese ass on this shit. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, I never put no females up on my wall though. like I just idolize them because it's shit. You know, yeah, see, see, I got in trouble for uh, I had this uh, little Kim. I had little Kim, the one she, the little album cover. I had that boy on my wall, and but I had like behind my door and shit. Like, so then my mom said one time, man, take this shit. I was like, you know, what I'm saying yeah, thirteen little homeboy, little pom pom out. Yeah, we had the little, had the little Janet Jackson covering, you know, had the little covering her breast and shit. You talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quick story, my cousin. <laughs> it was him. My mom didn't know who it was, but it was him. He had, and she was uh, cleaning up the bathroom, found that little, the little Jan Jackson poster up under the sink. Like, fuck y'all got going on. But <laughs> it was him. It was him though. Yeah. Uh, give me your um your top three, top three rappers now. I don't know, man. I just, I All right, really... top, your top three rappers ever. Like your favorite three. I mean, I got to say, definitely Rock him, Pop. Mm. A lot of people love Big. I love Big, but I just speak said stuff sometimes to me that was questionable, man. I'm just that type of nigga. I can't lie to you. Oh, yeah, yeah, he said some shit. Suck you <laughs> look so good. I suck look, you. Yeah, oh, bro, yeah. what? I wonder what he was yeah, thinking when he said that. Like, fuck all the kids in the ass, throw them over the bridge. And, yeah. But lyrically, he was dope. But I, so, you know, people that reached me all the way more so was like Pop, Rock mm -hmm. Him. Um, I don't know, man. Strong third. Might even be somebody like Cube or something. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? People yeah. be sleeping on it's Cube. Definitely sleep on that Cube. Shit, that first shit and all that all and Daye shit. He definitely slept on Cube. But, you know, there's a lot I like. Like I say, Big Daddy K always been one of mine. So, literally, mm -hmm. but. Top, your, your, your top three songs that you ever recorded? Solo ones. I don't know, man. I had to think about that. It's a lot of shit, man. Yeah. I couldn't just say a top three right now. All right. I, uh, all right, no. Big Hurt top three TV shows, past or present. You know, it's different air categories. Though. Let's go, let's you know, I do that. You gotta be. Let's go. It's too many. You got comedy. You got let's gangster go, shit. Let's you go. Got comedy TV shows. Comedy TV shows. Good times. Sanford and Son. Sanford and Son definitely. And um, what's happening? I love yeah. the black. Like they, the black show rerun and rerun. <laughs> Been that motherfucker dance like a motherfucker. No, he ain't big niggas. <laughs> Yeah, you, 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 you would you a jitter? Nah, I ain't jitter. No. <laughs> we should break and water away sure. and pop lock. Man. Yeah. A little bit. We even from that era. For, now, good times made me mad, man, because I felt like they had a lot of times to get out the hood, but the mom was holding them back. Like, every time they had, like, no, this this ain't right. Like, like you know. Yeah, she took the black Jesus thing. She went that yeah. night. They like a like, motherfucker. Like, that black Jesus Like, yeah, you stopping him, huh? Like, man, uh, yeah. But no, sure. it was, that was a classic show until, uh. Tell Pops had passed away. Yeah, when he died, I was hurt. Like, yeah, when JJ was the bad house, yeah. 
That whole episode, I was like the biggest hurt nigga in life, damn nigga. <laughs> yeah, for sure. He felt so bad for Jay. He trying to work, man. He ain't making but $1.85 an hour, man. He get a raise. It's $2 an hour now. I got $2 an hour now. He brag. He glad about it. I'm like, man. Duh. And they killed James, man. Yeah. I said, damn, I ain't like Carl, man. Carl get the fuck yeah, out. Yeah, he get out, dog. That whole shit was just like, Carl JJ just felt wrong, man. man. House Carl, man. no, Carl. Damn, I got with the African dude. Like. Man, no, I didn't act before that. She got with Keith, the football Yeah, player. football dude, yeah. He both went to the league, hurt his leg. Yeah. And, <laughs> at the wedding. I say, they look just terrible. No, bad, dog. No, <laughs> that shit wasn't good times for shit, man. No, that's an awful times, that boy, dog. Everything kept going bad, man. JJ got with the bitch. She's on hair wine. That's Debbie Allen. Duh. Yeah, damn, he did that. That's just all fucked up, bro. Damn, good times. Shit was bad times. Yeah, that was the ones I liked on my three little top, the top shows. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, you uh, you went to R&B? Yeah. Top three old school. Thing, top three old school R&B acts. R&B acts, mm -hmm. groups. Mm -hmm. See, I like old school shit that nigga ain't gonna say right off. Like they niggas ain't gonna say right right off mint condition. Oh shit, yeah, yeah. Cold yeah. motherfuckers. Hell yeah. Man. That nigga Stokely, bad motherfucker. Man. Mm hmm Uh I like mint condition. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I used to like boys and men for a while when they first came out, but mm -hmm. I don't know, man. I'm starting to like <laughs> change my opinion on them. No, for sure. Me it was cold when they first came out, but uh, yeah. New Edition. Yeah. Um, it's a lot of groups, man. You know what yeah. I'm saying? You got the Jagged Edges of the world. You got, yeah. you know, you got Drew Hills. You got... Yeah, with new addition though, man, I know what's ain't gotta be hurt, dog. Right, Ralph Transvent, because you look at their group, he sacrificed the most because they wanted him solo off rip. He's like, no, I'm doing for the for the team. But then it's like everybody did better apart besides him. BBD did their thing. Bobby was the shit sold records, classic, well, got classic album. You know why? What up? No offense to him, I love him as a group. One of the greatest all time, Ryan B. Right, uh, no addition. He wasn't really all that talented, singer, bro. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. A lot of times they let the lead singer not be the best singer. Mm -hmm. They did it with the Supremes. Mm -hmm. Diana Ross. When what's her name is the coldest motherfucker you no, sure. ever heard, Florence Ballard. Yeah. I don't know if something about the little cute, squeaky sounding. <laughs> you know what I mean? They yeah. wanted that to be like up front. Mm -hmm. Ralph, I mean, Ralph don't seem better than, than um, Ricky. No, no, no. You Dude, when they did that motherfucking BBD man, shit, hell that yeah. shit was fire, bro. I was a young dude. I should have threw them down there in it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That motherfucker uh, tell me why and all them type of songs. Mm -hmm. Shit, shit, fire, man. Hell yeah. Rick showed this range on that motherfucker. No, for sure. He, he had Everybody like the poison. That was the one to get you going. That was the New Jack era. Everybody mm -hmm. was on the New Jack beats. Yeah. But that motherfucker uh, tell me why you cry with that Oh, that's that. on hard. I was that shit to the Hell yeah. Hell yeah. See, but yeah, I love that type of R&B, bro. The shit now is cool. Yeah, it's more solo R and B artists now. It ain't many groups, mm -hmm. but back then, them groups, man, when they in, in, in unison with that shit yeah. and the shit good, cold shit. For sure, Josie too, to a degree. Josie, they in there and there too. I ain't asked you this, but what's your uh, what's your take on um, on on female rap in the city or just period? Like, what's your what's your take on female rap right now? Like, what you what you think about it? I think everything right now is just the, the, the freak air. Mm -hmm. Everybody, you know. On some slutty shit, mm -hmm. which I mean, women always been sexy, but it's starting to get to the point of goddamn. Mm -hmm. The one girl, with the pussy, our coochie pink, the booty <laughs> hole brown. Yeah, and, but <laughs> I say, bro, what is, what is we listening to now? I ain't knocking it. You say what you want to say, and they, they love it. Yeah, the, the, these young, the young motherfuckers love it. Can it, can a lyrical, a uh, lyrical, just like wow, what is that? Man? Can a lyrical uh, female can they can they sell? Like just off the and not like with the looks, just like off the off the bars. I mean, it's hard, man. I've been looking for years to see that really happen. And you got to have some kind of sex appeal when it comes to men and women. Mm -hmm. You ain't got to be sleazy, but you got to have some sex appeal, at least that. Mm -hmm. Now it's more sleazy, but I mean, I'm not knocking it when I'm saying it, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's, it's some girls can rap still, regardless, even if they're doing that. Mm -hmm. But uh, the ones that really just rap and don't do any of that, a lot of times it's hard to sell because... They, you got a lot of niggas can rap. I want to hear some niggas rap spit. I can go to this nigga and that nigga. <laughs> so what am I looking at you to see, really? Yeah, for sure. And they be the sex appeal. That's what. The, that's how they say it. It's always been like that, bro. Whether you're trying to get a job 
Women going there, nice skirt, cold ass body. She might not even be as qualified as the other chicks. They gonna give it to her. She a cold motherfucker in the office to be looking at. Yeah, yeah. As yeah. long as she knows something, at least we can school on her other shit. I mean, that's how I be. Mm -hmm. Nigga gotta really know his shit a lot of times. Yeah. But you know, it's beauty and it's brawn. Mm -hmm. Beauty is the women, and brawn is niggas. Niggas muscle. Mm -hmm. Muscle win out here. For sure. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, but it's some dope chicks, man. You know, I know no, for sure. Even the ones that's doing the sleazy shit, they can really spit some of them. Mm -hmm. But that's the niche that everybody going with right now in the female game, for the most part. Not okay, all of them, but most of them. Okay. Now I want to end this uh, interview off, man. Give me a story that you would never forget in uh, in the studio, a studio session that you would never forget. A studio session I never forget. Yeah. I can say a lot of rock bottles, but I'm gonna go with this one. All right. When I did the feature with uh. Eminem and Obi. Okay. Uh, Obi album. Mm -hmm. And Trick was on there too at the end. There you go. Mm -hmm. Obi had finally caught up with me. He had been trying to catch me for a long time. Like, okay. I'm gonna try to catch you a year hurt to do this feature. I've been talking to people, they said they ain't got your number. You know how the people he was telling me he had talked to him, like, they got my guy. Yeah, <laughs> niggas, that's why I say niggas be hating so bad, bro. This shit crazy. Man. So we finally get together, he gave me the track, whatever I I write the verse. Um we wrote the verse together somewhere. I forgot where he was at Smile Studio. He played the track playing. We wrote it. He said, we're going to go to the other studio, Nine Mile. This is a studio M be going to our town with Rock Wanda somewhere mm -hmm. in Nine Mile, 75. And when he come here, he was telling me that. Mm -hmm. We go there, record it. I record it. I go back home, shit. Because we had to do paperwork and everything. This through Interscope and Shady Records. That's when I got published mm -hmm. with ASCAP. And, uh... I go home, I'm just, you know, job done, so on to the next. He yeah. called me like, yeah, I heard they want you to come back and say this one part. It was something like, say it the different, the way you said it, but just keep, but say it a little harder or something. <laughs> Some real, like, minute shit. I'm like, all right. <laughs> they paid me, though, and we did good publishing and all this, so I'm like, all right. I go mm -hmm. back, do it. Mm -hmm. He hit me again, I cut it away, like, <laughs> yeah, they love that shit, bro. But they say, one, him say, we want to party? I say, look, man. <laughs> tell him to be there. Yeah. Those are my kids. For sure. I say, so when we do it, I'm done. I can't keep coming back and then he got to hear it from somewhere else and then refer to you. To let him hear everything and let me know how exactly that's the way. Because, you know, that's that Dr. Dre shit that I had real dog. I'm like that dog. I'll be trying to be a professional. Yeah. So I say, have him there. Mm -hmm. And they had him there. So when I found his day, like, yeah, with the studio now. You, you can pull up him here. Okay. I pull up, I got a camera nigga with me and all this shit. I'm like, I'm about to go and film the session, all this shit, some yeah. good footage. <laughs> Man, we get to the door, they had a big 6'9 nigga in there, like, <laughs> only heard this is a closed session, and this and that, they closed the session. So I had to tell everybody to go ahead and wait yeah. for to come back about an hour, this and that, they ain't letting nobody else in. For sure. So I go in, and I'm in there and shit. What up, Bert? My bad, man. We're not trying to keep you coming back before. I just wanted the song to be perfect. I love what you said, but uh, mm -hmm. I'm like, much respect. I'm gonna, let me show me what you talking about. You show me something else. It was kind of like simple shit, but you know, I did it. Mm -hmm. Shit was sound the same to me, but <laughs> you know, they want to. I guess they paying their money. Want you yeah. to make you earn your money or like whatever. For sure. So we did this shit. It was cool too, though. We kicking in talking about future shit and just a lot of questions about music and this and that. What I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And that was really it. But that was a hell of a session because, like I say, it had me going back and forth. Yeah. And when I come at this last time, he there. I'm thinking, I'm going to get footage, all this shit. They close <laughs> shit, shut that shit down. But, like, hell no, I'm wrong. Time, yeah. yeah. But that was probably most, you know, one of the funniest at the same time, serious. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hell no, man. But shoot, man, I, hey, man, I appreciate you coming on. Appreciate you taking your time to, you know what I'm saying, do the show. Like yeah. I said, man, you you one of them five that had me really go ahead and do a deep dive and really start back listening to music and shit. Because, like I said, my mom and dad was listening to, you know saying, old school R&B and shit like that. It was never rap in my house. So once I, you know saying, my introduction to those five individuals made me go back and really start, like, listening to music. Right. Because I, nice I never even had listen. I listened to your album before I even listened to Reasonable Doubt. Okay. You feel me? So I had to go back and, you know saying, like, damn, let me go ahead and go back and listen to, to these, you know what I'm saying, these rappers. Yeah. yeah. But that's what's up though. At least you went back. Yeah, yeah. You, was, uh, you cared enough to let me see it in. Now I'm into it. Let me sure. go learn a little more of the roots. Yep, yep. And that's what it's about, bro. You can't not know what happened before you and just be only worried about you and what's ahead mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. That's just I love to know the history of everything we doing, man. For sure. If you make pieces and you get a pizza plate, you probably want to look up who the first, how they did the first dough that was good. Yep, or, yep. Or, you know what I'm saying? How what ovens cook the best. 
you gotta do some research mm -hmm. on shit, man. Sometimes that's yeah. all. Yeah, for sure. Anything, anything you want to leave people with, man? Any motivational words? Anything you want to leave them with? I mean, you know, much love, peace, and prosperity to everybody. New music coming soon. New movie coming soon. Mm -hmm. uh, go cop my sons. Baby Hurt. Mm -hmm. Young Hurt. Sibling rivalry streaming everywhere. For sure. And uh, shout out to Woodrow. Woodrow for life. Rest in peace. Thrush. It's his birthday today. Mm -hmm. Love you, bro. Rest Mission. in peace. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, Woodrow for life, man. Shout out to my wife, the kids, everybody. Yeah. 100. Oh, real quick, a new album. Who you guys? You can't even tell some people you working with on that boy. It ain't nobody but the regular people. My sons and Jay Nutty on there. Bet keep, keep being host. Hey, yeah. Shit on this. Well, sure, man. You know, like I said. Oh, and Devious. Devious probably might be on this one too. All right. That's it. But that's in and, and that's coming out this year. Uh, hopefully. Yeah. The whole. Right, thing. You say you, you, say you want to go Dr. Dre John. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> You know, this ain't nothing nowhere near that. For sure. That's the detail. That's, I mean, that that's shit still in the world. Seven years for it, man, come out. This is just a few months we did this one. So. No, for sure, for it's sure. Coming. Hell yeah. Well, like I said, man, I appreciate you coming on. Episode 169, Big Hurt. Shavers, everybody podcast. Ain't no competition for this. I don't see it. We just know. For sure.